Good afternoon, softball fans, and welcome to K13 Media's live coverage of Gordon State College Highlander Softball, presented by Countryside Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Jackson, Georgia. I'm Chad Feltman coming to you live today inside the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth right behind home plate on a sun-drenched Saturday afternoon in Barnesville, Georgia. Hello, everyone, and welcome in to our afternoon broadcast of Highlander Softball. Boy, do we have ourselves a good one on tap today as the Highlanders are getting ready to take on the hottest team in the conference today. We've got the Phillies in town from ABAC. They have made the trip north from Tifton, and they are currently the first place team in the conference standings, and they are hot 10 straight wins to their credit entering today's contest. Our Highlander team not doing too shabby themselves. Currently sitting at 10-4 in the conference, and we've won six straight ball games. So a heavyweight matchup on tap for us here this afternoon. Coming up at 1 o'clock, that is our scheduled first pitch time. The field looks great, not a cloud in the sky, and we should be in store for a great day of college softball. Coming up in just a few seconds, we will sit down with Coach Allie Hatterman. She is the head coach of the Gordon State Highlanders. We'll go pregame with Coach Allie, pick her brain, and get her thoughts on today's matchup and the current six-game winning streak that Gordon State is riding. That's coming up next live right here with K13 Media. Dedication, compassion, and integrity. We've got the experience and expertise. When you need some help and you feel like there's nowhere to go, you can count on us for everything you need to know. The Sellers Law Firm, where clients become family. Welcome back to the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth here at Gordon State College in Barnesville. We're getting closer to the first pitch, a big doubleheader on tap today against ABAC. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Chad Feltman with K13 Media, joined by the head coach of the Highlanders. Coach Allie Hatterman is here with us this afternoon. And, boy, it don't get much bigger than this, does it? Sophomore day, a Saturday, and, oh, by the way, the hottest team in the conference right now. A bags in the house, winners of 10 straight. Good to see you, Coach. Good Happy to see game you. day. Yes. Let's yes. talk about this team we got here today. Our second time seeing them this season. We split against the Phillies down in Tifton back in March. How about today? Can we take both games? I mean, that's the plan. I, we're, we are prepared. Um, the girls are ready to go. So as long as we can execute our game plan, I think it should be in our favor today. Well, this ABAC team has won 10 straight games. But, Coach, your team has quietly put together a nice little run. We've won six straight. Tell me what's worked so well during our six-pack winning streak. Our defense has really settled down. We've made some plays with runners in scoring position to keep teams off the board. Um, Munoz has been lights out, um, not giving up many earned runs, let alone walks in these last six to eight games. So as long as she's consistent, defense is consistent, we have timely hitting, um, it'll be in our favor. Since the last time we spoke, uh, Caitlin Munoz has racked up a couple of more achievements. A couple of weeks ago, she set the all-time strikeout record here at Gordon State College. Talk to us about that. Yeah, that record's been intact for quite a while. Uh, Megan Stover had that back in 2012, and she was a kid that we really wrote her arm in conference play. It wouldn't be uncommon to see her pitch both games of a doubleheader, so I didn't know if that record would ever be broken. And she just slowly kept creeping away at it last year into this year, and it was uh, down at South Georgia State she finally got that, um, that record, which put it at 290. And then in her last start, she topped the 300 mark, right? She did. She did. And she's she's rolling from there. She so. was talking to me yesterday during the baseball broadcast. She came over with me, and she says she's closing in on beating last year's record. She thinks she's about 50 Ks away. Does that sound about right? Maybe. Yeah, I'd have to go look. Right. She was in the 170s last year for the season. Okay. So, yeah. Three, yeah, she's getting 300 close. 300 in a career. And, again, just a sophomore. It's not like she's been doing this here for four years. Correct. I mean, just two years. Well, what, a year and two-thirds, basically? Yeah. And uh, congratulations to Caitlin Munoz, again, the all-time strikeout leader here for Gordon State College Softball. I want you to put her overall, Coach. I know you've been here for 25 years at Gordon State. Where would you rank Mooney as far as your all-time great pitchers? She's one of the top three for sure. I would have to say Megan Stover, who had the record okay. before. Um, Faith Hager had a pretty good um, couple years here for us as well. So she's right up there with them. Speaking of special players, again, we're here today getting ready for two games against ABAC. 
And it's a special day here at Gordon State College because we are celebrating Sophomore Day. And for the fans out there who may not be familiar with what Sophomore Day is, including myself up until about two weeks ago, explain what Sophomore Day is and why that's so special at a place here like Gordon. Well, it's one of their last home games that they'll play here at, at Gordon State. And some will stay here and can and pursue four-year degrees. Others will move on to get degrees as well as play softball. So we kind of treat it like a senior day, your last few moments out here on the field with your teammates. We'll recognize them after the second game with their families um, and just show our appreciation to them. And that's, I think, the best comparison is like a senior day for high school because, again, here at a junior college like Gordon, you don't get four years. You don't get a senior day athletic. So two is the max, and that's why we're celebrating it here today. And, Coach, you've got 11 young ladies we're going to be celebrating here today. Just talk to me a little bit about this group and where they stand and how special they've been they, coaching these ladies. Yeah, they're real special. Um, they came in, honestly, they were almost unsure, you know, um, and they jumped on the backs of that class last year, and it's been really great to just see them grow as people, um, softball players, their maturity has stepped up, and even their leadership. So every day, it's not a day of work for me or Nikki. We come out here, and we can have fun, and, you know, it's business-like, but yet they know that they can talk to us about anything, whether it's here or back up in the office. Wish you could get at least one more, two Oh, more I wish I could them. have them for all four. <laughs> I just – I was talking to Coach Nikki yesterday about it. Like, this is what our lineup would have looked like – if we would keep these kids right. for four years. And in their freshman class, we would have had the Faith Hagers, you know, and, a, and Amunia was there in the circle as long as these other big hitters. It was quite an impressive lineup. So, um, yeah, I would love to keep them for four one day. Well, we're going to celebrate all of them after our second game here today, and hopefully we'll be celebrating back-to-back -back wins here today. Gordon State and ABAC all sitting right there in the conference standings right now. As a matter of fact, ABAC just got through beating Georgia Military in back-to-back -back games, so they're tied for first place. And, Coach, I know there's a lot of coulda, woulda, shoulda, what ifs down the road, but if we could take care of business today and win both games, that put us right there in tie for first place, going to Georgia Military on Wednesday. Well, not exactly. Um, okay. There's a yeah, lot of tiebreaker so rules. Record. Um, we have the same record. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Yeah, so. um, ABAC technically is in first place right now because they've taken three out of four from there you GMC. Go. Okay. If we can take three out of four from ABAC, it looks like we'd be in first, but we're in second until we play GMC because we've split at this point. So that doubleheader would determine who goes into first place. See, somebody's always got to have the technicalities. You can't just sit here and have fun with it. God, coach, come on. Hey, well, hopefully today we can talk about those tiebreakers. That would be a good conversation to have yeah. later at the end of today. Coach Allie Hatterman joining us here in the broadcast booth. Two games today against the Phillies from ABAC. Winners of 10 straight taking on our Highlanders. Winners of six straight on sophomore day. Coach, is always good to see you. Best of luck here. Beautiful day for softball. Let's get after it this Thank afternoon. Thank you. Should be a great games. Coach Ali Hatterman joining us here in the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth. We'll take one more quick timeout when we come back. Starting lineups and the first pitch coming up next. It's Gordon State and it's ABAC live right here with K13 Media. Well, it's always great to catch up with Coach Ali and the pregame show and so glad to have you here with us. For Highlander Softball, presented by Countryside Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Jackson, Georgia. It is a beautiful Saturday in Barnesville. Glad to have you here for this heavyweight matchup between the Phillies of ABAC and the Highlanders from Gordon State College. Ten game winners. ABAC's won ten straight. Gordon State's won six straight. And these two teams split in our series down in Tifton back in March. Let's give you today's starting lineups presented by Buckner's Family Restaurant in Jackson, Georgia. First coming to the plate here for ABAC. They're the visiting team. The center fielder, Lexi Metz, followed by the third baseman, Laney McGee, and the first baseman, Carter Gore. Then you've got Allie Eadson, the right fielder, Ava Rowland, the catcher, Ashley Archibald, the shortstop, Anna Hutchinson will pitch in bad seventh. Delana Barton will play second in bad eighth. Ellie Bryan will play left in bad ninth. And right now, it is time to play ball in Barnesville. First pitch from Caitlin Munoz is delivered for a strike at 1257, and we are underway. Caitlin Munoz, the all-time strikeout leader for Gordon State softball. Off to an 0-2 start as Lexi Metz fouls the second pitch out away. Today's first pitch being presented by Collier's Greenhouse Garden Center and Nursery in Jackson, Georgia. An 0-2 count just underway, top of the first, game number one. 
Munoz ready and a swing and a miss. And there's her first strikeout of the ball game. Lexi Metz will go down swinging. Hey, let's give you the defensive order here for the Highlanders. Starting today in left field, it's going to be Reagan Waller. Kendall Rollins is in center. In right, it's Emma Smith. We'll give you the infield right after this first pitch to Laney McGee. Here it comes, and it's fouled out of play. Emma Gable is down at third. Joni Littlejohn is at short. Maddie Neal's at second. Skylar Evans at first. Kate Cole behind the plate. And again, on the rubber today, it is the sophomore, Caitlin Munoz. 0-1 count. Here's the pitch. Again, fouled out of play off to the right, and it's quickly nothing in two. Munoz recorded the record last week when she picked up strikeout number 293. In her most recent start, she was able to crack strikeout number 300 in her career. The 0-2 misses upstairs, and now it's one ball and two strikes to the third baseman, Laney McGee. 1-2. Nobody on. One out, top of the first. Here's the pitch. Popped up behind home plate. And we'll see ourselves another 1-2 pitch. Glad to have everybody on the broadcast today. Again, I'm Chad Feltman with K13 Media. Live streaming today on Facebook and YouTube Live. Want to welcome all the Highlander fans and all the ABAG fans to the broadcast. We're glad to have everybody here with us. One, two, upstairs, and now it's two and two. Lady McGee out of Stevens County High School, hometown of Carnesville, Georgia. Batting second here in the top of the first. One, two, low and inside, and it just about got her. Actually, that was the two, two. Now the count's full. Had three balls and two strikes. Caitlin Munoz on the rubber in the circle. Full count. Here's the wind and the pitch. Popped out of play, and we'll see another 3-2. Again, ABAC has won 10 straight games. Currently sitting at first place in the conference standings. They are 12-4. and four. Georgia Military is also 12-4, and four, but ABAC has taken three out of four on the season from Georgia Military, so that gives them the current tiebreaker. Another full count. Here's the 3-2. Hit right back up the middle, and it's going to drop in for a blue pit in shallow center field. So there's the first hit of the ball game off the bat of Laney McGee, and she'll now stand at first. And now it's going to bring up the first baseman, Carter Gore. Carter wearing number nine for the Phillies. She is out of Madison County. One on, one out, top of the first. First pitch right back up the middle, just over the glove of Mooney. Flip to second is not in time. Throw to third. There's the tag. What a weird play at second. Maddie Neal made a great play behind the bag, got it over to shortstop where Joni Littlejohn was on the back. Umpire called the runner safe, but Laney McGee knew she was out. She started walking to the dugout and Highlanders had to apply the tag at third for the second out. So it's going to go down as a fielder's choice. Missed call by the umpire, but it was so obvious Lady McGee knew she was out. So two down, and here comes the right fielder, Allie Eatson. Runner at first. Here comes the first pitch to her. There's a strike on the outside corner. It's nothing in one. Allie wearing number 20. She's out of Veterans High School, hometown of Warner Robins, Georgia. One on, two outs, top of the first. Here comes the 0-1. There's a strike inside, and it's quickly nothing in two. Boy, this game today just has playoff atmosphere all over it. Great crowd here with us at the ballpark. Not a cloud in the sky. Perfect day for softball. Here's the pitch. It's fouled out of play off to the right. Now, it will be an interesting day because just to our right, the Highlander baseball team is in action against Andrew College. So we're going to have baseballs and softballs flying all over the place today. We should have had a hard hat company sponsor the game and hand out hats to the fans. This one's upstairs for ball one. It's one and two. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Top of the first inning, runner at first. Allie Edson at the plate. Here comes the one-two pitch to her. Fouled off her fist. Again, out of play, off to the right. And the count's going to remain a ball and two strikes. Told you that ABAC has won 10 straight. They're sitting at 25-11 and 11 overall on the season. Highlanders 15-16 and 16 overall on the season. 
Here's the one-two. Hit out towards shallow right field. Now out and making a running catch. Great play by Kendall Rollins in right center field. She's able to track it into the gap, battle the sun, and put it away for out number three. So a single by McGee, but no harm done to the Highlanders here in the top of inning number one. No score as we go to the bottom of the first live today here at Gordon State College. And now we flip the lineup book over, and let's tell you the starting offense and defense here for the Phillies and the Highlanders. Defensively here today for ABAC, it's going to be Ellie Bryan in left. Lexi Metz will be in center. Allie Edson will be over in right. In the infield, Laney McGee is at third. Ashley Archibald at short. Delana Barton is at second. Carter Gore will be at first. Ava Rowland is behind the plate. And in the circle pitching is going to be Ava Hutchinson. Offensively here for Gordon State, leading it off, it's going to be the right fielder, Emma Smith, followed by the second baseman, Maddie Neal, then the third baseman, Emma Gable. Four, five, and six, Skylar Evans. Allie McGee, she'll be the DP batting fifth today. Then Joni Littlejohn will bat sixth in the bottom third of the order. It's going to be Kate Cole, Reagan Waller, and Kendall Rollins. One through nine here for Gordon State, who's led by Coach Allie Hatterman in her 25th season as head coach of the Highlanders. Again, Gordon State has won six consecutive ball games, trying to keep that streak going and still hanging there with a chance for first place in the conference standings. And leading it off for the Highlanders. Here in the bottom of the first inning, former Pike County Pirate, here's Emma Smith. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom of the first, Hutchison is ready, and here's the first pitch. It's a little low for ball one. Emma Smith leading it off. Couple of lefties to lead it off here for the Highlanders. Here's the 1-0 pitch. It's outside, and now it's 2-0. Anna Hutchison out of Ola High School in McDonough, Georgia. Freshman wearing number seven here for the Phillies. 2-0 count, and here's the pitch. There's a strike on the outside corner. And now they bring the count to two balls and one strike. Bottom of inning number one, game one of our afternoon doubleheader. Here comes the 2-1. Foul back to the fence, and that's going to even the count at two balls and two strikes. Again, these two teams split down in Tifton when we played in March, Gordon State won the first game 9-3. to ABAC came back and won the second game in the bottom of the seventh on a walk-off 6-5. Here's the pitch. It's outside, and now the count's full at 3-2. and two. Gordon State battled back in that second game. Highlanders were down 5-3 to three going into the top of the seventh, got two runs to tie it, but left the bases loaded. And then in the bottom of the seventh, a bunt down the third baseline over the head of Emma Gable. And then a bloop single over Skylar Evans' head at first end up being the difference. 3-2 pitches upstairs, and it's a leadoff walk to Emma Smith. So the Highlanders have their leadoff batter on. And it'll bring up another former Pike County Pirate. Here comes Maddie Neal. Again, another lefty. Look. Climbing to the box here for the Highlanders. Maddie shows bunt, pulls it back, and it's outside for ball one. It is sophomore day here at Gordon State. 11 sophomores on the Highlander team, and after our second game today, we will honor each and every one of these ladies for their contributions here to the program. 1-0 count. Again, Maddie shows bunt. Again, she pulls it back, and it's ball two. 2-0 count to Maddie Neal. Bottom of the first inning, no score. Glad to have everybody here with us. 2-0 count. Here's the pitch. This one lifted out towards shallow center. Lexi Metz will come in, and she'll put it away for the first out. So a fly out to center off the bat of Maddie Neal will bring up Emma Gable. Emma's going to be joining me today in the broadcast booth in between game one and game two. She'll be here at the broadcast booth along with Sydney Knight. We will pick their brains, give you a chance to meet the Highlanders in between games today. What a fun conversation that's going to be. First pitch on the way. Strike on the outside corner. 
Emma told me a few weeks ago when we were here a stat I just could not believe. It. That is that she never played high school softball. She went to a small private school that didn't have a softball team. She rips this one down the left field line, though. Oh, it's going to be called out near the warning track by Ellie Bryan. Emma just did miss getting one out of the ballpark. A long, loud line drive down the left field line, but it's squeezed out there by Bryan for the second out. Going back on that comment about Emma, never played high school ball, but played a lot of travel ball, and that's what she accredited to getting her here at Gordon State as Skyler Evans digs in. First pitch is outside and ball one. Two outs runner on first. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Game one of our afternoon doubleheader. Two Giants in the conference going at it today. Here's the 1-0. -oh. That drops in for a strike and it's one and one. A good off speed pitch by Anna Hutchison. Again, former Ola Mustang. She must like the green. She's still in it down at A-back. 1-1 one, one count. Here's the pitch. Outside. Runner goes. Throw to second. Is off the mark. Going to get into right field. And Emma's going to have to hold up at second. Throw was just a little high off the glove of the shortstop, Ashley Archibald. And now the Highlanders have a runner in scoring position. Base hit here. Good score, Emma Smith from second. Here comes the wine and the pitch to Skyler. It's high and outside. Got a 3-1 count. Skyler Evans. Yesterday, some of the girls were saying she's the best cook on the softball team. She's got a 3-1 count. Here's the pitch. It's outside, and there's ball four. Second walk of the inning issued by Hutchison. And that's going to put runners on first and second. Hey, Sue Binder is joining us today, listening and watching in from Michigan. Binder or Bender? Did I say that? Binder, I said that correctly? Glad to have you on, Sue, all the way from Michigan. Welcome to the broadcast. Here's Allie McGee. First pitch is downstairs for ball one. Two outs, runners on first and second, bottom of the first, and there's our first baseball of the day. All right, what's the over-under going to be on how many of those fly on the field today? There's the first. We'll keep a tally mark just for the heck of it. Again, the baseball team playing right now about 90 feet to our right. They're playing Andrew College. Here's the 1-0 in there for a strike, and it's even at 1-1. Gordon baseball team won yesterday 21-11 to to stop their four-game losing streak. 1-1 to McGee. It's outside and 2-1. and one. Again, both of these teams riding momentum right now. A-back has won 10 straight. Gordon has won six straight. 2-1 count to Allie McGee. Here comes the pitch. And it's in for a strike, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runners on first and second in the bottom of the first inning. Scoreless ball game. Allie McGee trying to change that. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. She'll send this one out toward right center field. It might find the gap. Nope, it's going to find the glove of Allie Idson. Good running catch out in the gap. Idson puts it away, and that will do it for the first inning. The Highlanders get a couple of runners on, a walk to Emma Smith and a walk to Skylar Evans, but Gordon State can't cash it in. We are through one. It is a scoreless ball game in Barnesville. Spring is here, and Countryside Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Jackson and Madison are ready to help you hit the road. Ram Truck Month is back, and this month you can save big on our remaining 2023 Ram trucks, up to $15,000 on select 2023 models. Looking for a new Jeep? We've got them! And during the Jeep Celebration event, we're offering savings up to $16,000 on our 2023 Jeep Gladiators, and savings up to $15,000 on our 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees. We've also got the area's best supply of new 2023 Dodge Chargers and Dodge Challengers. Hellcats, Scat Packs, RTs, and Last Call Editions. All available today. Shop our huge online inventory at CountrysideAutomotive.com. While you're there, apply for easy financing. And this month, let's find your new ride at Countryside. I-75 exit 205 in Jackson and I-20 exit 114 in beautiful Madison, Georgia. 
Top of the second inning, no score. Welcome back to Barnesville. Ava Rowland will lead it off here for Abeck. First pitch on the way to her. Down back to the fence, and there's strike one. Caitlin Munoz pitching today for Gordon State. And again at the plate, it's Ava Rowland out of Dodge County High School. Here's the 0-1 in time, and there's ball one. Hometown of Eastman, Georgia. I wonder if they still do the world-famous Eastman gun shows down there. Man, I used to hear about those things forever. One of the biggest gun shows in the country. 1-1 one, one count, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. I remember back when I was in high school, which was a long time ago, back in the 1999 to 2003, when I was at Jackson High School, Dodge County used to be a region game for us as this one slapped out to right and it's going to get down for a base hit. Emma Smith will pick it up and get it back in, but it's the second hit of the ball game for the Phillies as Ava Rowland has a leadoff single. And that'll put a runner on first. And here comes the shortstop, Ashley Archibald. Ashley wearing number 19 out of Brookstone High School, hometown of Fortson, Georgia. She'll show bunt, pops it up behind home plate, and it's going to get against the catch fits. And there's strike one. Glad to see Barbara Enright on the broadcast with us. Coach Jamie Allen is with us. Softball coach at Jackson High School. Glad to have Coach Allen on. I believe a former player here at Gordon State, if I'm not mistaken. Bunt shown again. It's popped up in. Oh, my goodness. What a catch by Kate Cole. The ball was up in the air. She had a work around Archibald and a diving catch up the third baseline. Sticks showing off the web jam here in the top of the second. Good play, Kate. First out of the inning. And here's the A-back pitcher, Anna Hutchison. First pitch, swing and a miss. There's strike one. Man, oh, man, what a play by Kate. One down, one on, top of the second. Scoreless ball game. Anna Hutchinson at the plate. First pitch here, excuse me, the 1-0. Excuse me, the 0-1 is in for a ball. It's 1-1. I get it right eventually. Another Ola Mustang here on the roster for A-back. The pitcher, Anna Hutchinson. 1-1 one, one is in there for a strike at the knees, and it's 1-2. and two. Boy, this just has that feel of postseason play. Two, I'll call them elite, JUCO softball programs going at it today. 1-2 count. Here it is. Bound back to the fence, and we'll see another 1-2. Again, Gordon State was the conference tournament champs last year. ABAC has won 10 straight. They're currently first place in the regular season standings. I mean, this is about as good as it gets. One-two count. Here it comes from Moody. She went upstairs and is taken for ball two. Hutchison wasn't taking the bait. She's got the sparkling ribbons in her hair. The way the sun hits it, it just... Shines as she works at the plate. Sends this one down the left field line. And we'll see another 2-2. Two, -two. two balls, two strikes, one out. Top of the second inning, runner at first. Pitcher versus pitcher. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Popped up right behind home plate. This one might be behind us, and it's out of play. We'll see another 2-2. Two -two. After today, just one more home game for Gordon State this year. Got to come up in a few weeks when Andrew College comes to town. 2-2, Two -two, here it is. Floated upstairs and taken for ball three up around the letters. And now the count's full. Second batter that Mooney has had a full count on. Hutchison at the plate. Delana Barton on deck. Payoff pitch, here it is. Fouled back off the face mask of Kate Cole. And Hutchison just did get a piece of it to stay alive. And we'll see another 3-2. Runner at first is Ava Rowland. She led the inning off with a single to right. 
Mooney checks the wristband. She's ready. The 3 2. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number two for Caitlin Munoz, and she takes care of her counterpart, Anna Hutchinson. So Mooney wins the first battle, pitcher against pitcher. Two down, and here comes the second baseman, Delana Barton. Runner at first, top of the second, no score. Here comes the first pitch from Mooney. It's at the knees, but a little inside, and there's ball one. Kate was set up outside. That one came back in. Delana Barton batting eighth in the lineup here for ABAC. Here comes the 1-0. That one's low and inside, and it's 2-0. Four times this year, Mooney has been named the Conference Pitcher of the Week. Her last start, she was able to break the 300 strikeout mark. This one's fouled off, and there's strike one. She set the all-time strikeout record about a week ago on the road when she got strikeout number 293. And now she's working on beating last year's record. She told me yesterday she's about 50 away from topping her mark from last season. 2-1, popped up behind the catcher Cole and it's gonna drop down for a base hit, or excuse me, for a foul ball. 2-2 Two -two count. Skyler Evans was charging in from first, Emma Gable from third. And Kate just couldn't find it up in the air. Did a full 360, but couldn't locate it, and we'll see a 2-2. Two -two. Mooney checks the armband again. Here comes the 2-2 two -two pitch. This one lifted out toward left center field. Reagan Waller on the run, and she'll make the catch for out number three. So once again, Aback is able to get a runner on. They got a leadoff single from Ava Rowland, but they can't move her around. And we are through an inning and a half. Still no score here at Gordon State College as we get ready to go to the bottom of the second inning. Hey fans, how would you like to save at your next stop at the pump? Well, thanks to the May and Carter Oil Company, you can. All you have to do is download the new BP Me app today. It's free and it's available for Apple and Android devices. With the new BP Me app, you can save five cents per gallon at any BP location across the U.S. Download the new BP Me app today and let the May and Carter Oil Company show you how you can save five cents per gallon on your next fill up. Dedication, compassion, and integrity. We've got the experience and expertise. When you need some help and you feel like there's nowhere to go, you can count on us for everything you need to know. The Sellers Law Firm, where clients become family. Bottom of the second inning, got a scoreless ball game here in Barnesville. Glad to have you here with us on this sunny Saturday, about an hour south of Atlanta, for K13 Media's live coverage of Gordon State College Highlander Softball. Leading it off is going to be the shortstop, Joni Littlejohn. Joni, a former Wildcat out of Locust Grove High School, will take strike one on the outside corner. The catcher, Kate Cole, is on deck, and then it's going to be Reagan Waller in the hole. Six, seven, eight spot due up here for Gordon State. Bottom of the second, no score. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. It's outside, and that evens the count at 1-1. One one. Again, pitching, former Ola Mustang, Anna Hutchinson. On the rubber and the circle for the Mustangs of Abac, who have made the trip north from Tifton, Georgia today. Here's the 1-1, one -one. grounded out towards shortstop, down on a knee, and throw to first in time from Ashley Archibald. And that is the first out here in the bottom of the second. So one up, one down. And it's going to bring up the catcher, Kate Cole. They call her sticks. Had a grand slam home run in Gordon State's last game. She'll bat with one out, swing and a miss, and it's nothing in one. Kate is batting seventh in the lineup. Kate is a former Greyhound out of Jones County High School. Here comes the 0 1 pitch to her. This one popped up on the right side of the infield. Delana Barton, the second baseman, 
Thought about taking a look at it, but it's going to be caught off and caught by Allie Edson out in shallow right field for the second out. Looked like Barton was going to try to make a play, but last second was caught off. And there's the second out. So two down, nobody on, and here comes Reagan Waller. Boy, was she a lot of fun to have on the baseball broadcast yesterday. Out of East Paulding High School in Dallas, Georgia. First pitch is outside for ball one. From what I have come to understand, the life of the party for the Highlander softball team. She was an absolute trip yesterday. Spent about four innings with her during the baseball broadcast. This one's outside, and it's 2-0. She is batting eighth in the lineup. Two outs, nobody on. Scoreless ball game. We're in the bottom of the second inning. She's facing Anna Hutchison. Here comes the 2-0. Little squib off the end of the bat. It spins in front of the infield. Throw to first, not in time. And Reagan Waller shows off the speed down the first baseline. It's going to go down as an infield single, and that is the first hit of the ball game. For the Highlanders, a two-out squibber right in front of home plate. That ball just spun and spun in the dirt, and she beat it out by a step. So two outs runner at first, and here's Kendall Rollins. First pitch on the way. There's a strike outside. I think I got that wrong a minute ago. I said Joni Littlejohn was the former Wildcat from Locust Grove. Joni's out of Demaris, Georgia, Habersham Central. Kendall at the plate now is the former Locust Grove Wildcat. Fights this one off her fist, and she'll foul it out of play down the right field line. It's nothing at two. Kendall playing center field today, batting ninth in the lineup, so we're back to the top of the order in the on-deck circle. Bottom of the second inning. No score. Runner at first, 0-2 count. Hutchison ready. Here comes the 0-2. It's outside, and there's ball one. A ball and two strikes to Kendall Rollins. Made a good catch out in center field in the top of the first inning. One-two count. Here it comes. This one again fouled off the fist and out of play. Big crowd here with us today, especially over here on the Gordon State side down the first baseline as it's sophomore day. 11 Gordon State sophomores going to be honored after game two today. They hired just some random Joe Blow to do the announcing after the ball game. I hear he's no good, but we'll see. One two is way upstairs. And it's two and two to Kendall Rollins. Back to the top of the order on deck. Bottom of the second inning. A back and Gordon State. Two two count. Here it comes. In the dirt of the count's full three and two. Hutchison has walked two batters already. That came in the bottom of the first. She's in jeopardy of walking her third. Full count. Reagan Waller will be moving on the pitch. Here it comes. 3-2 on the way. Slap foul down the first baseline. An inside out swing by Kendall, and she almost snuck it over the top of the first base bag. Right down there where Coach Nicky is camped out today for Gordon State. Coach Allie Hatterman, the head coach down the third baseline. Another 3-2 from Hutchison. She'll rock, she'll wind, and here it comes. Grounded right back up the middle. A diving play at shortstop by Archibald, and then she lunges over and tags the bag for the force out. Man, what a play by the A-back shortstop. Can't do nothing but tip your cap on that. Six unassisted on the putout. And that will retire the side for the Highlanders here in the bottom of the second inning. Gordon State gets its first hit, though, an infield single off the bat of Reagan Waller. We will move to the top of inning number three. Still no score here in Barnesville. When it comes to printing, there's only one name to remember. Georgia Signs and Print. From banners, yard signs, magnets, life-size cutouts, and vinyl, Georgia Signs and Print is the locally owned printer there for all your printing needs. Need graphics for your company vehicles and windows? How about commercial signs and screen print? Georgia Signs and Print can handle it all. Plus, they offer the fastest turnaround time and no minimum order requirement. No job too big, no job too small. If you're looking for a local printer who offers the best customer service, highest quality, and quickest turnaround time, Georgia Signs and Print is your local printer. 
For more details, visit Georgia Signs and Print on Facebook. At Georgia Signs and Print, we make it our business to showcase your business. Georgia Signs and Print, proud sponsors of the K-13 Media Player of the Game Award. Top of the third inning, no score as Ellie Bryan, the left fielder, will step into the box. First pitch on the way is upstairs for ball number one. You just heard our commercial for Georgia Signs and Print. Big shout out to Joey Whitaker and the team at Georgia Signs and Print. They will give out the Player of the Game award today when we are wrapped up after our doubleheader. 1-0 is outside and it's 2-0. And of course, that Player of the Game will get the free meal to Mama's Kitchen here in Barnesville. Boy, did I chow down with Mama's last night. Had the chicken Philly. Oh, my goodness. 2-0 is in for a strike. It's called the Big Mike. Grilled chicken, mushrooms, onions, peppers, white American cheese. Oh, my goodness. It was amazing. I guarantee you three people could have ate on it. 2-1 misses inside, and it's 3-1, but I wasn't sharing mine with nobody. The Big Mike Chicken Philly from Mama's Kitchen. Player of the game eating good here from Gordon State College. 3-1 count. Here comes the pitch. Check swing, and there's ball four. So that is going to be the first walk of the day issued by Munoz. And it'll put the leadoff runner down at first, and we'll go back to the top of the order. That may be the first walk Mooney's given up in like two months. She does not walk a lot of batters. Now we're back to the top of the order for Lexi Metz. She'll show butt, pops it up again right off the fence. And there's strike one. Lexi Metz, the leadoff batter, struck out in the top of the first to start the ball game. One of two strikeouts Mooney has recorded so far in the ball game. 0-1 oh, count. Here comes the pitch. She shows Bunt again. Pops it up. And, oh, just out of the reach of Kate Cole. Kate almost made her second diving catch of the day on a Bunt attempt. Had one last inning. Laid out going up the third base line for an out. Now it's a no-two count on Lexi Metz. Let's see if she's still bunting or swinging away. Runner at first. Nobody out. Top of the third. Mooney's ready. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Second time today, Mooney has struck out Lexi Metz. So that's the first out here at the top of inning number three. Then to bring up the third baseman, Laney McGee. She had a single her first time up. One down, runner at first. Here comes the pitch. And she'll go out toward left center field. And this one is caught by Kendall Rollins. Good jump right off the bat by Kendall. Over to her right in the gap in left center field, and she'll put it away for the second out. And now to bring up the first baseman, Carter Gore. She grounded up the middle, hit into a fielder's choice. Her first time up. First pitch here, popped up in the infield, over toward first base. Skyler Evans will make the catch on the chalk. And that will retire the Phillies here in the top of inning number three. Once again, they get the leadoff runner on, but can't do anything with it. We'll go to the bottom of the third. It's still a scoreless ball game here at Gordon State College. Hey, today's coverage of Gordon State softball being presented by our good friends at Buckner's Family Restaurant in Jackson, Georgia. They're located right off of I-75, exit 201 and Highway 36, open this weekend, serving up the best fried chicken in all of America, along with those southern-style sides they've got you taken care of at Buckner's Family Restaurant. Be sure to stop by this weekend. Check them out online at bucknersfamilyrestaurant.com. Come by and visit your friends. Southern style cooking served on lazy Susan tables. You will not regret it. I promise you that. It is a national landmark, and it's 14 miles away from Gordon State College. Again, check them out online at bucknersfamilyrestaurant.com or swing in today or tomorrow. Bring the family for a meal you will not forget. So far, it's been as advertised. We got to the bottom of the third inning. No score. And we'll go back to the top of the order here for the Highlanders. Leading it off 
is going to be Emma Smith. Emma ran the count full and drew a leadoff walk her first time up in the bottom of the first inning. First pitch on the way. There's a strike. And it's nothing in one. Anna Hutchinson pitching here for A-back. Former Ola Mustang out there in the circle. Here comes the 0-1 to Emma. This one chopped out over to second, quickly over to first, and just in time, Delana Barton throws out the speedy Emma Smith. Man, she was flying down the line. But Delane is able to throw her out by a step for the first down here in the bottom of the third, and it'll bring up Maddie Neal. Back-to-back -back lefties, back-to-back -back former Pike County Pirates at the top of the order here for the Highlanders. First pitch is a little low, and there's ball one. Maddie flew out to center field her first time up. Nobody on, one out, bottom of the third. Here comes the pitch. There's a strike on the outside corner. It's one and one. Maddie Deal at the plate. Emma Gable in the on-deck circle. Boy, what a crowd we've got here with us today. One-one count. Here's the pitch. This one's fouled down the left field line. And now to bring the count to a ball and two strikes. Maddie Neal batting second in the lineup. One down, bottom of the third inning. It may just take one in this ball game. It could be as simple as that. One, two count. Here comes the pitch to Maddie. This one lifted out toward left field. Shallow left and running in to make the catch is Ellie Bryant. Ellie had her played perfectly down the line in left field, but felt like the wind may have caught that one a little bit and try to bring it back toward the infield. But Ellie made a nice running catch. And she puts it away for the second out. So two up, two down, and here comes Emma Gable. Nobody on. First pitch on the way to Emma. This one hit out toward right center field, and it's going to find a gap all the way to the fence. Emma with a big turnaround first, head first slide, and a second, and she's in safely. Emma Gable must know that Grandma's watching up in Michigan because she just hit a two-out double for the second hit of the ball game for the Highlanders. Grandma Sue Binder watching up in Michigan and granddaughter just delivered with a two out double. And bonus points on the head first slide at second. Skyler Evans to the plate now. RBI opportunity here in the bottom of the third with two outs. First pitch is low and inside and there's ball one to Skyler. Skyler walked her first time up. One of two walks issued so far by Anna Hutchinson. Two down, runner at second, bottom of the third, game one of our doubleheader. There's a strike right down the middle. Want to say hello to Rita Waller. She's tuned in on the broadcast cheering for Reagan today. So we are streaming on four different platforms today. Here's the 1-1 upstairs, and it's 2-1. We're on Facebook Live with K13 Media with our Gordon State Athletics Facebook page and our Gordon State Softball Facebook page. And we are also on our K13 YouTube channel. 2-1 count. Here it comes. Ooh, a borderline call outside, and it's 2-2. Two and two. So the comments I'm able to see today are on the K13 Media Facebook feed and on the K13 YouTube channel. So if you're dropping comments, that's where I can see them. 2-2 count, here it comes. This one slapped to right. It's a base hit in the shallow right field. Emma Gable had a green light, but then hits the brakes after a big turn around third. And it's a two-out single off the bat of Skylar Evans. And now the Highlanders have runners on the corners with two outs, and here comes Allie McGee. What I was getting at was if you're going to drop a comment today, be sure to drop it on the K13 Media Facebook page feed and the K13 Media YouTube channel. Those are the only two that I can see today. They're on the corners with two outs. Here's Allie. First pitch is high and outside and ball one. Allie McGee flew out to right field her first time up. RBI opportunity, bottom of the third. Highlanders with runners on the corners and two outs. 1-0 is downstairs and it's 2-0. 
Just glad to have everybody on today. ABAC fans, Gordon fans, what a great day for college softball. Very honored to have you here on the broadcast with us. 2-0 count. Here comes the pitch. Popped up right side. Shallow right field over toward the line and making the catch right on top of the line again is Allie Idson. She has made a couple of really nice catches out in right field. Second time today that Allie McGee flies out that way. And that will do it for the Highlanders in the bottom of the third. A double and a single. We get them on the corners, but they are left stranded. We'll go to the top of the fourth. This one flying by here in Barnesville. It's a scoreless ball game. Hello, friends. This is Pastor Benny Tate of Rock Springs Church. I have one question for you. Are there any dog fans here today? If you love the University of Georgia football, you are in for a special treat. I'd like to personally invite you to Rock Springs Church on Sunday, May the 5th, as I interview Georgia's quarterback, Carson Beck, at all of our services. You can find more information about our campus location and service times online at rockspringsonline.com. I hope to see you Sunday, May the 5th at Rock Springs Church as I interview quarterback Carson Beck of the Georgia Bulldogs. I'll see you then. Well, that's going to be a big day at Rock Springs Church when Carson Beck is coming next month in Milner, Georgia. And speaking of the dogs, they're playing right now up in Athens for their spring game, the G-Day game. I've got it recorded. I'm going to be watching it tonight, so looking forward to getting home and checking it out. we got a good one going on here in Barnesville. A-back in Gordon State. Scoreless. Top of the fourth inning. Munoz back out on the rubber to pitch. Right fielder Ali Edson will lead it off. First pitch right off the end of the bat over towards shortstop, and there's Johnny Littlejohn to put it away. So ABAC has swung, uh, swung at the last three pitches they have seen. They are not wasting any time here in the batter's box. First out of the inning. And it'll bring up the catcher, Ava Rowland. She had a single back in the top of the second. First pitch here. Off her fist and out of play. There's strike one. Ava Rowland batting fifth in the lineup. Catcher for the Phillies. Again, she singled in the second. One of only two hits in the ballgame so far for Abeck. It has been a pitcher's duel. Here's the 0-1. Line to center field. Kendall Rowland right there for the catch. And there's out number two. So two up, two down. And it's going to bring up the shortstop, Ashley Archibald. She tried to get a bunt down her last time up. And that's when Kate Cole was able to lay out and make the catch up the third base line, the catcher for the Highlanders. First pitch on the way. There's a strike at the knees. It's nothing in one. Top of the fourth inning, game one of our doubleheader. Scoreless. Two outs, nobody on. A back at the plate. Here's the 0-1. In tight. That one spun a little too far inside. It evens the count at one and one. Ashley Archibald at the plate, the pitcher. Anna Hutchison on deck. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. She chased one way upstairs, and it's one and two. Mooney trying to retire the side in order for the first time today. She's ahead of the count. One ball and two strikes. She's got her sign. Here it comes. It's high and outside, and there's ball two to even the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Ashley Archibald digs in. Mooney's ready. The 2-2. Two -two. Check swing. Did she go? Will it get a check down at first? And yes, she did. Ashley Archibald chases two pitches upstairs. And Mooney indeed retires the side in order. One, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. We'll go to the bottom of inning number four. It is still a scoreless ball game, and we are glad to have you here with us today for the first time. It's time to check in inside the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth. I'm Chad Feltman with K13 Media. 
So glad to have all of you here with us today for this heavyweight showdown between ABAC and Gordon State. If you're just tuning into the broadcast, ABAC right now, they've won 10 straight games. They're sitting at 12 and 4 in the conference. They are tied record wise with Georgia Military, who is also 12 and 4, but ABAC has beat Georgia Military three out of four, so they currently hold the tiebreaker. Now, Gordon State, they're sitting at 10 and 4. They've won six straight in the conference. If they can pick up two wins here today, you guessed it, they'll be sitting at 12-4. and four. And, oh, by the way, next opponent for Gordon State, Wednesday in Milledgeville, a doubleheader against the Dogs from Georgia Military. So, good day for softball, a couple of good games coming up. And, again, we're glad to have you here with us today for the broadcast live at Gordon State College. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. It's a scoreless ball game. Joni Littlejohn, Kate Cole, and Reagan Waller will lead it off. Joni grounded out in a shortstop her first time up. She'll lead off the bottom of the fourth inning. First pitch on the way. Strike inside, and it's nothing and one. Joni grounded out to Ashley Archibald at shortstop. Ashley's made a couple of really nice plays at short today. One of them was a diving stop, and then she laid out to tag the bag at second to get a force out to end an inning, to end the Highlander threat that was in the second. I mean, literally laid out like on the dirt, like she was about to take a nap and tag the bag. 1-1 one, one count. Here comes the pitch. This one hit off the fist and again fouled down the first baseline. One ball, two strikes to Joni Littlejohn. Went to high school at Habersham Central in Demarest, Georgia, up in the northeast corner of the state. One-two count to Joni. Ava's ready. Here comes the pitch upstairs, and it's two and two. Excuse me, Anna. I keep calling her Ava. Sorry about that, Anna. I can't read my own handwriting. A-N-A-A-V-A. -A -A -A. Let me scratch that out and see if I can fix my own chicken scratch over here. Two-two count. Here comes the pitch. High and outside, and it's three and two. Joni wanted to offer at it, but the last second she was able to hold the bat back. And the count's full, three and two. Be nice to get a leadoff runner on here. They've only done it once so far today. That was in the bottom of the first inning. Three, two count. Here's the pitch, and we'll do it here in the fourth. It's a leadoff walk. So Joni Littlejohn will take the free trip down to first. That is the third walk of the ball game for Anna Hutchinson. Her first walk since she gave up two in the bottom of the first. And now it's going to bring up Kate Cole. Runner on first, nobody out, bottom of the fourth. Scoreless ball game. First pitch on the way to Kate. She'll square around, tries to get the bunt down, and fouls it off for strike one. Again, these two teams split back in Tifton. That was in mid-March. Highlanders won the first game. ABAC won the second game on a walk-off in the bottom of the seventh. A bloop single on the edge of the grass behind first base. That came after a pop-up bunt down the third baseline. The 0-1 is outside, and it evens the count at 1-1. One one. Emma Gable was playing third in the bottom of the seventh, came charging in from third, and the bunt ended up all the way down at the bag. Bad luck. A couple of batters later, a bloop single right over Skyler Evans' head that hit the lip of the grass down the right field line. And that's how they won game two. 1-1. Kate shows bunt, gets it down. Third base line. It's a fair ball. Throw to first is in time. And it's going to be a sack bunt. Good play at third by Laney McGee. She tucked that bunt right off the top of the chalk and was able to throw over to first in time. So it's a sack bunt off the bat of Kate Cole. That will get the runner down to second, and it'll bring up Reagan Waller. She had an infield single her first time up, picked up the first hit of the ball game for the Highlanders. A little swinging bunt midway back to the pitcher. Takes a first pitch strike here at the knees. Hit off the end of the bat, went about halfway to the circle and just spun and spun. And she was able to beat the throw out. That was the first hit of the game for the Highlanders. Came back in the bottom of the second. Here's the 0-1. She'll send this one over to second base. That'll get the runner over to third. Delana Barton will throw over to first and retire Reagan Waller. So a 4-3 on the put out. And now it puts the first run of the game just 60 feet away. Second time today the Highlanders have had a runner at third. 
We had him on the corners last inning. Couldn't bring one home. Let's see if Kendall Rollins can help it out. She'll bat with two outs, runner at third, bottom of the fourth. First pitch on the way, high and outside, and it's ball one. Kendall grounded out to shortstop her first time up. That was that play I was talking about when Ashley Archibald laid out, took a base hit away right back up the middle, and then laid on top of the bag at second to end the inning. 1-0's upstairs, and it's 2-0 to Kendall Rollins. Runner at third is Joni Littlejohn. Bottom of the fourth inning is a scoreless ball game. Top of the order is on deck with Emma Smith. 2-0 count to Kendall. Here comes the pitch. That one's upstairs, and it's 3-0. Again, Anna Hutchinson has issued three walks in the ball game. And now let's see if Kendall's got a green light on the 3-0. Runner at third, two outs, bottom of the fourth. Hutchison ready, the 3-0 pitch. She came inside and got a strike at the knees, and it's 3-1. Well, a lot of great folks tuned in on the broadcast here today. Glad to have everybody watching. I see some, some good names there on that list. I'll give them a shout-out here in just a bit. 3-1, here it comes. Fouled off, finished three and two. Greg Parrott's tuned in. He is the voice of the Pike County Pirates baseball team on Fun 101 FM. Glad, uh, glad to have Greg on the broadcast. Former Jackson Red Devil quarterback and shortstop, Brad Lunsford's tuned in, and Coach James Lau, the head baseball coach at Eagles Landing High School, is tuned in on the broadcast. Glad to have everybody here. They're on our Facebook feed today. Payoff pitch, 3-2, here it comes. It's high, it's outside, and it's ball four. Kendall Rollins works a two-out walk. Fourth walk of the ball game, and for the second straight inning, Gordon has runners on the corners with two outs. And we're back to the top of the order with Emma Smith. Emma, Emma walked in the first. She grounded out to second in the third. Two down, first pitch on the way. Strike right down the middle. It's nothing in one. Lead-off batter at the plate, bottom of the fourth in a scoreless ball game. Highlanders with runners on the corners again, facing Anna Hutchinson. 0-1 is low and outside. Former Ola Mustang against former Pike County Pirate here in the bottom of the fourth inning. 1-1 one, one count. Boy, this has been a good one so far. Hutchison ready. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Bunted down the third baseline. Throw to first is off the mark. It's going to get toward the Highlander dugout. One run will come in. Joni Littlejohn comes in and scores. And now Gordon will have runners at second and third. Laney McGee came charging in from third, made a great play, but Delana Barton did not get to the bag in time, could not fill the throw, and it's 1-0 Highlanders. And I know what you're thinking. Why in the world is she bunting with two outs? Well, that's why. Put the ball in play, make something happen. And just like that, it's a one nothing ball game, and now the Highlanders are going to have runners on second and third with two outs. And it'll bring up Maddie Neal. Well, if Maddie could find a way to slap one into the outfield, get a couple of runs in again, it may not take much to win either one of these ball games today with these two teams playing. So the inning stays alive. We'll get a clarification on that call from Coach Alley and see if they're going to go error on the throw or infield single. We'll put a question mark right there on that. Runners at second and third. Two outs. Here's Maddie Neal. one nothing ball game. She'll go out toward left field, down the line, and dropping foul for strike one. Manny has popped out to center field. She flew out to left field in her two plate appearances so far. Every now and again, Maddie will surprise everybody and pull one down the right field line. She's behind 0-1. Runners at second and third. Two outs. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. High and outside, and it's 1-1. One 1-0 and one. One Highlanders. Bottom of the fourth inning. One one count. Here comes the pitch. In tight is two and one. Brushed her off the plate. 
Boy, if we could find a way to get Maddie on. Power in the on-deck circle with Emma Gable. Just missed a home run in the first inning. Had a double in the second. Or second time up, I should say. 2-1 count. Here's the pitch. This one grounded out towards second. Fielded and throw to first in time by Delana Barton. And that will retire the side. But the Highlander is able to get the first run on the board. Joni Littlejohn comes in to score as the Highlanders show a two-out butt. And we'll go to the top of inning number five. It's a one-nothing ball game. Gordon State on top. Roofing, gutters, siding, painting, concrete, fencing, and more. The list goes on and on. No matter what you need done around the home or office, advanced roofing and interiors can handle it all. Even major storm damage. No job too big or too small. When was the last time you checked the condition of your roof? Advanced Roofing and Interiors offers free roof inspections. Don't wait for issues to arise. Contact us today for a free roof inspection. Our expert team will provide an assessment, answer all of your questions, and ensure your peace of mind. Be sure to visit our Facebook page to see recently completed projects and read real customer reviews from real customers. Advanced Roofing and Interiors is locally owned and operated, licensed and insured, and works with all insurance companies. Visit us online at advancedroofingandinteriors.com to learn more and to see all services we offer. Top of the fifth inning, it's a one nothing ball game. Highlanders on top is Anna Hutchinson will lead it off for Abeck. First pitch on the way, fouled out of play, and there's strike one. Seven, eight, nine due up here for the Phillies. Anna Hutchison, the pitcher, the second baseman, Delana Barton, and the left fielder, Ellie Bryan. They're all facing Caitlin Munoz. Here's the 0-1. There's a strike at the belt inside. It's nothing in two. Mooney so far, four strikeouts in the ballgame. She's ahead nothing in two here to her counterpart, Anna Hutchinson. The 0-2 pitch popped up behind home plate. Or is it in the infield? Let's see. It's over in front of us and off the glove of Skylar Evans. The catcher, Kate Cole, turned around and looked at us like it was sailing out of play. And it was over on the right side of the infield near the on-deck circle and pops out of the glove of Skylar Evans. Hopefully that doesn't come back and bite us and to give Anna Hutchinson new life. 0-2 count. Here's the pitch. Oh, just missed. Inside, just below the belt. And it's called a ball. Mooney was thinking she was about to get strikeout number five. One-two count. Here it comes. There it is. Swing and a miss. And, indeed, she does pick up her fifth strikeout of the ball game. Second time she has struck out Hutchison, and there's the first out of the fifth. So Mooney has now struck out the last two batters she has faced. One out, and here comes the second baseman, Delana Barton. She flew out to Reagan Waller in left field her first time up. She bats eighth in the lineup. First pitch, swing and a miss. It's nothing and one. Delana Barton playing second base for a bag today. One nothing ball game. Top of the fifth inning. Highlanders just got on the board in the fourth. Here's the 0-1. Again, inside corner taken for a ball. Man. Ooh, I don't know where that was missing. Looks good from where we're at. Right on the inner half of the plate at the thighs, and it's ball one. 1-1 one, one count to Barton. Here comes the pitch. She'll take this one out toward left field. The wind is going to carry it out toward left, and Reagan Waller's going to make the catch with one hand up against the fence. Oh, man, I thought it was out of here, but the wind pushed it back in. And Reagan Waller puts it away for the second out. Delana Barton just missed a solo homer to tie the game. She hit it as far as she could out in the left field, and again with Waller right up against the fence. She squeezes it for the second out. First pitch is a strike here to Ellie Bryan. Batting ninth in the lineup, bottom of the order here for A back in the top of the fifth inning. She walked back in the third. Here comes the 0-1. This one fouled out of play, and it's nothing in two. 
So far today, she is the only person that Mooney has walked. That came back in the top of the third inning. Mooney's ahead nothing and two, looking for her second straight one, two, three inning. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. This one grounded out the third. Emma Gable has it, throw to first in time. And indeed, it's another one, two, three inning for Munoz and the Highlander defense. But boy, it was close. Delana Barton with a long drive to the left, just missed a home run. The ballpark holds it. We'll go to the bottom of inning number five. It remains a one nothing Highlander lead. Our coverage today of Gordon State softball being presented by Collier's Greenhouse and Garden Center in Jackson, Georgia. They're located right off of Highway 16, just one mile past the Sheriff's Department and about two miles outside of the Courthouse Square in downtown Jackson. Collier's is there for all of your garden needs this spring. Whatever you want to get planted in the ground, Collier's has it for you. Check them out on Facebook today. Every single day, they've got new arrivals coming. Man, the color, color, color they have. If you want to turn your garden into something absolutely amazing this spring, make sure you start with the fourth-generation family-owned and operated folks at Collier's Greenhouse and Garden Center in Jackson. Again, you've got to check out their Facebook page, see all the new arrivals coming daily to Collier's Greenhouse and Garden Center. We'll go to the bottom of inning number five. It's a one nothing Highlander lead. And the heart of the order coming up, Emma Gable, Skyler Evans, Allie McGee. If you were ever going to sit in the outfield with your glove waiting on a ball to come your way, it could be this inning. First pitch outside. It's ball one. Emma Gable had a double to the right center field gap with two outs, her last at bat. One for two on the day. Batting in the number three spot. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. This one's outside and it's 2-0. Anna Hutchison continuing to pitch for A-back. She's issued four walks in the ball game, two in the first, two in the fourth. So far, she has yet to record a strikeout. Here's the 2-0. It's outside, and it's 3-0. She's missed outside on all three pitches here to Emma Gable. Emma's got a big gap in right center field. That's where she went last time. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom of the fifth, one nothing ball game. Here comes the 3-0. It's outside, and there's ball four. And for the second straight inning, it's a leadoff walk. So Emma Gable will take the free trip down to first. And it'll bring up the first baseman, Skylar Evans, who walked in the first and singled in the third. Runner at first, nobody out, bottom of the fifth. Game one of our doubleheader. She'll show bunt, puts it down. It's a perfect bunt, but then it skips foul out of play. Starting down the third base line, look like it may have hit a rock or something and just took a U-turn right back to the left. And there's strike one. It's not every day you see your cleanup batter bunting, but that's how tight of a ball game this is, and that's how close we know this doubleheader is going to be. 0-1 count to Skyler. Gables at first, nobody out, bottom of the fifth. She'll show bunt again. This one's upstairs, and there's ball one. Careful over there at first, Emma. You got the second baseman, Delana Barton, sneaking in. Ava Rowland, the catcher, almost threw down to first after that pitch. 1-1 one, one count to Skyler. She'll show bunt again. Can't get it down, and there's strike two. And now we'll see Skyler swing away. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Bottom of the fifth inning. One to nothing, Highlanders. Anna Hutchison pitching for a back. One two count. Here it comes. It's outside. There's that snap throw to first, and Emma's back with a head first dive. Two two count. Again, Anna Hutchison trying to find her first strikeout of the ball game for a back. She's got a two two count to Skyler Evans. Here comes the pitch, and Skyler sends it to left field, all the way off the top of the fence. Emma Gable will go from first to third, and it's going to be a double for Skyler. Man, she just missed a two-run homer right off the top of the fence underneath that yellow tubing in left center field. A double for Skyler, 
will put runners on second and third. Nobody out, and here comes Allie McGee. She has popped out twice to right field. First pitch on the way. Like a change up there, and there's strike one. If she goes to right field again here, that's perfectly fine. We can get a run in from third. Emma Gable is down at third. Nobody out. Bottom of the fifth. Here's the 0-1. This one right field. She did again, and this may go all the way. It's out of here. Three run homer off the bat of Allie McGee. Well, she flirted with right field in her first two at bats. That time she gave it a big old fat kiss and sent it out of the ballpark. It's a 4-0 Highlander lead in the bottom of the fifth. Allie McGee with a three-run homer. Well, I told you about three minutes ago, this would be the inning to sit in the outfield if you wanted to catch a ball. With Gable, Evans, and McGee coming up. Always big home run threats, and Allie McGee definitely capitalized. The walk by Emma, the double by Skyler, three-run homer by Allie McGee has made it a 4-0 Highlander lead, and now we'll have a meeting in the circle as Anna Hutchinson getting touched up just a bit here in the bottom of inning number five. Again, after the ball game, don't forget, we will give out the award for our Georgia Size and Print Player of the Game. That player will pick up the free meal to Mama's Kitchen right here in Barnesville. They're located right off of Highway 41. Open today until 6.30. They got ribs tonight, Neanderthal pork chops. They've got those ribeye steaks. Stop by and check them out this afternoon. And by the way, happy birthday to Miss Angie over at Mama's Kitchen. It's 4 nothing Highlanders. Still nobody out in the bottom of the fifth, and here comes Joni Littlejohn. First pitch is a ball inside. Joni grounded out to second. That was back in the second. Excuse me, grounded out to short in the second, and she walked in the fourth. Nobody on, nobody out, bottom of the fifth. 4 nothing ball game. Here's the 1-0. Popped up. Foul territory down the first baseline, and nobody's going to catch it. Ava Rowland, the catcher, and Carter Gore look at each other and one of those situations, I thought you had it. No, you had it. Well, nobody had it. And another opportunity for Joni to swing the bat. Kate Cole's in the on-deck circle here for the Highlanders. After a scoreless first, second, and third, Highlanders have now scored four in their last two at-bats. 1-1 one, one misses high and outside, and it's 2-1. and one. Wind blowing in from left field. 2-1 count. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom of the fifth for Joni Littlejohn. Here it comes. Fouls this one right back to the fence. Everybody thinks they're a big manly man until they're sitting here behind home plate and that big old bright softball comes at you and then you about jump out of your chair, don't you? Yeah. Not so tough anymore, are we? That's okay. I about had to change my shorts a couple of times this year, so it's a 2-2 count. Uh, Joni Littlejohn, here comes the pitch to her. Popped up out of play behind home plate. Man, the crowd we've got here with us today. Goodness gracious, this place is packed. Again, just about 90 feet to our right, our men's baseball team is in action. They've got a doubleheader going on at the same time we're playing here for softball. They're playing Andrew College today. 2-2 two, two count. Here it comes. Head out towards shallow right field. Itson will camp out underneath it. No sunglasses, no problem. And she'll put it away for the first down here in the fifth. Itson has been very, very busy. Out in right field today. That's the first out. So nobody on, one out, and here comes the catcher. Kate Cole had a sack bunt her last time up. First pitch on the way. This one grounded down the third baseline, and, man, she just missed it. Turned on one and just about snuck it over the bag at third, but it's strike one. Hey, we told you next up for the Highlanders, they're going to be in Milledgeville on Wednesday taking on Georgia Military. That game was supposed to take place on Tuesday, but it has been rescheduled for Wednesday. 
Here's the 0-1. This one grounded in the hole at short. Good play by Archibald. Throw to first is not in time. Ashley Archibald at shortstop with a diving stop in the hole. Long throw as she just about threw out Kate Cole, but Kate was able to beat it barely for an infield single. Still a great attempt out there short by Archibald. Just about stole the base hit away, but puts a runner at first, and here is Reagan Waller. First pitch is a strike outside. Reagan today had an infield single in the second, and then she grounded out to second base. That was back in the fourth. She'll bat here in the bottom of the fifth, one out, runner on first. Here comes the 0-1. This one fouled right back to the fence. And it's nothing and two. Kendall Rollins in the on-deck circle. So we're at the bottom of the order here for the Highlanders. If you're just tuned in, a leadoff walk by Gable, a double by Skyler, and a three-run homer to right center by Ali McGee has made it 4 nothing. Here comes the 0-2 upstairs. Reagan's able to hold back, and there's ball one. One ball, two strikes, one out. Anna Hutchinson continuing to pitch here for ABAC. Here comes the one-two to Reagan. Hit out towards shallow center. And coming in and making the catch is going to be Lexi Metz, and that's the second out of the inning. So two down runner at first, and it's going to bring up Kendall Rollins, the center fielder. Grounded a short back in the second inning, then she walked in the fourth. She walked with two outs. Kept the inning alive. She's got two outs again here in the bottom of the fifth. Kate Cole is the runner over at first. First pitch on the way. Downstairs and inside, there's ball one. Again, ABAC has won 10 straight games entering today. Gordon has won six straight. Four nothing Highlander so far in game number one. Here's the 1-0 to Kendall. She'll ground this one over to Archibald at short. She'll throw over to first in time and throw out Kendall by about a step and a half. And that will retire the side for Gordon State. But a big inning for the Highlanders. A three-run homer off the bat of Allie McGee extends the lead. It's 4-0 Gordon State as we move to the top of inning number six. Spring is here, and Countryside Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Jackson and Madison are ready to help you hit the road. Ram Truck Month is back, and this month you can save big on our remaining 2023 Ram trucks, up to $15,000 on select 2023 models. Looking for a new Jeep? We've got them! And during the Jeep Celebration event, we're offering savings up to $16,000 on our 2023 Jeep Gladiators, and savings up to $15,000 on our 2023 Jeep Jeep Grand Cherokees. We've also got the area's best supply of new 2023 Dodge Chargers and Dodge Challengers. Hellcats, Scat Packs, RTs, and Last Call Editions. All available today. Shop our huge online inventory at CountrysideAutomotive.com. While you're there, apply for easy financing. And this month, let's find your new ride at Countryside. I-75 exit 205 in Jackson and I-20 exit 114 in beautiful Madison, Georgia. Let's go to the top of the sixth inning. It's 4-0 Gordon State. New pitcher in the ballgame for the Highlanders, Taylor Beagle. Former East Coweta Indian will come in and replace Caitlin Munoz. Top of the order for ABAC. First pitch from Beagle is downstairs for ball one. So Mooney goes five today and will leave with a 4-0 lead. Top of the order for ABAC, Lexi Metz at the plate. Foul tipped into the mitt, and there's strike one to even the count at one and one. Lexi Metz today is 0 for 2, struck out twice against Munoz. 1-1 one, one count. Here it comes from Beagle. There's a strike, and it's 1 and 2. Again, Taylor, former Indian out of East Coweta High School. She's ahead in the count, one ball and two strikes. She'll rock and wind. Here it comes, and it's fouled off at the plate as Lexi Metz just barely got a piece of it to stay alive. A run in the fourth, three runs in the fifth for Gordon State. 
It's 4-0 Highlanders here in the top of the sixth of game number one. Here's the one-two, lifted foul down the left field line, and it'll get into the grass. Sorry about that, forgot to change the video back over. Glad my wife has tuned in, sent me the text. Boss lady sends you a text, you better listen. I get so excited, I just forget sometimes. They're all by myself. That's why I always need, like to have her here with me. One-two count, here's the pitch from Beagle, swing and a miss. And for the third time today, Lexi Metz will go down swinging. So one out, and it's going to bring up Lady McGee, the third baseman. Singled in the first and a line out to center field to Kendall Rollins. That was back in the third. Nobody on. One out, top of the sixth. First pitch on the way. Just a little high and outside, and there's ball one. Daniela Mercia, I see your comment on our Facebook feed. We do not have a link for baseball today, just our softball games. That's why we covered baseball yesterday. Trying to spread the love a little bit. Here's the 1-0. This one hit out toward left field. It's crushed, and it's off the top of the fence. Reagan Waller will pick it up and get it back in, but it's going to be a one-out double off the bat of Laney McGee, and she just missed a home run. Right under that yellow tubing again. That ball looked like it was out of here off the bat. But it's going to go down as a one-out double off the bat of Laney McGee. Puts a runner in scoring position for the Phillies. And it's going to bring up the first baseman, Carter Gore. Fielder's choice. And now she'll pop out to Joni Littlejohn in shortstop before I could even give her line for the day. Second time she's popped up. Our other time was a pop-up in foul territory down the first baseline. So second out of the inning. So far, the double has not hurt. As the right fielder, Allie Itson will dig in. She's 0 for 2 on the day. A fly out to center and a pop out to short. First pitch on the way. Just below the knees for ball one. Good spot from Beagle. Just a little low, and it's 1-0. Top of the sixth inning. A back with a runner at second, two outs. Here's the 1-0 from Beagle. That one floats in for a strike, and I do mean floats in, like it was slow motion, just taking its time to get to the plate. It's 1-1. One one. Again, it's in today 0 for 2. Here's the pitch. This one smoked down the left field line, but pulled foul, and it's strike two. Again, Taylor Beagle in the circle pitching after Mooney went five. Got to wonder if we're going to see Mooney back out for game two. Is that why she was taken out early? It's going to be interesting to see. One-two count. Beagle's ready. The pitch. Foul out of play. Down the first baseline. Over toward the baseball crowd. Can't quite see their scoreboard over at the baseball field to get an update against... Andrew College. They won yesterday 21 to 11. Offensive onslaught yesterday. One, two, here it comes again. This one right back up the middle. Joni has it at short from behind the bag. She'll throw over in time. And throw out Ali Edson by about a step, and that will retire the side. Good play by Joni Littlejohn as she moves to her left, fields behind the bag, and fires a strike over to Skylar Evans, and that'll do it for a back here in the top of the six. Boy, the Phillies are flirting. They have missed a home run the last two at bats right off the left field fence. But still, nothing to show for the Phillies as we get ready to go to the bottom of inning number six. It's a 4 nothing lead. Gordon State on top. And again, today we want to say thank you to a few more of our sponsors, including Buckner's Family Restaurant. I want to say thank you to Collier's Greenhouse and Garden Center. And, of course, to our friends over at Mama's Kitchen in Barnesville. And, oh, by the way, I was telling you about Gordon State's game Tuesday being rescheduled for Wednesday. Well, it's because we don't have a bus driver for Tuesday, which brings me to this perfect opportunity. See how we segued there? Highlanders are looking to hire bus drivers here at Gordon State College. So if you or anybody you know would be interested in becoming a bus driver for Gordon State College, Please have them visit 
GordonState.edu and click on the Employment Opportunities tab. As you can probably imagine, they are hiring immediately. Obviously, we need you to have a clean driving record and a valid license. But yes, GordonState.edu, Employment Opportunities tab. Bottom of the sixth inning. Highlanders leading it 4 nothing. We're back to the top of the order. Emma Smith will lead it off. First pitch is a strike. A walk and a ground out to second today so far for Emma. 0-1 misses outside, and it's 1-1. One one. We're in the top, or excuse me, the bottom of the sixth inning. 4-0. Gordon State scored one in the fourth and three in the fifth. Here's the 1-1 outside, and it's 2-1. Two two. Five walks on the day so far for Anna Hutchinson. She continues to pitch. Still looking to record her first strikeout of the ball game. This one's foul tipped into the mid, and there's strike two. Evens the count, two balls and two strikes. Emma Smith, Maddie Neal, Emma Gable, first three do up. 2-2 two -two count, here it comes. This one lifted foul down the third base line, and it's going to get out of play. And we'll see another 2-2. Two -two. Again, Emma walked in the first, and then she grounded out to Delana Barton at second base back in the bottom of the third. Highlanders got three last inning. Lead-off walk, a double, and a three-run homer by Allie McGee. So I got the right center field. 2-2 to Emma. Here's the pitch. This one hit out towards shortstop. Archibald again with a strong play and an even stronger throw over to first. Boy, Abeck has got them one impressive shortstop out there in Ashley Archibald. Good play over there and throwing out the speedy Emma Smith. First down of the inning. Archibald's been busy at short as Maddie Neal will dig in. Maddie goes to left center field and a basket making catch and left by Ellie Bryant. Like she got crossed up a little bit. She was playing down the left field line, but was able to come in and make the catch and then kind of have a good laugh at herself after she made it. Second time today that Maddie Neal has flown out to the left. Hey, there's our second baseball of the ball game. Again, baseball team playing right now to our right against Andrew College. Two outs, nobody on. Bottom of the sixth. Here comes Emma Gable. First pitch outside for a strike. Emma Gable is going to be joining me right here at the table. In between game one and game two, she's going to bring fellow sophomore Sydney Knight with her. We will meet the Highlanders and go one-on-one -on -one in between games. This one's high and outside. Even the count at one and one. It's also sophomore day today. We've got 11 sophomores on the team here at Gordon State, and we will honor all 11 after game two today. 1-1 one, one count, here's the pitch. This one hit off the end of the bat, foul down the first baseline. Sophomore day in junior college athletics is like senior day in high school sports. In JUCO, you're only allowed to play two years. So this is kind of like their senior day here at Gordon. So we'll honor all 11 of them after our second game. One, two count to Emma Gable. Here it comes, swing and a miss. And that's the first strikeout of the ball game for Anna Hutchinson. And for the first time today, the Highlanders go down in order one, two, three. But that'll take us to the top of inning number seven. Highlanders leading four nothing, three outs away from a game one victory. Discover the power of precision with Countryside Mower and Gravely in downtown Jackson. During our open house event, enjoy exclusive deals like 0% financing with approved credit on new commercial and residential zero-turn mowers and rebates up to $1,500. We've got the area's largest selection of new Gravely and Aaron's zero-turn mowers. Over 200 in stock and ready for delivery. Need service on your current mower? Now's the perfect time to come see us. We have a huge parts department and we service all brands, not just the brands we sell. Get ready for spring during the open house event at Countryside Mower in downtown Jackson. For more information, 
and to see our full inventory, visit us online at countrysidemower.com. Here we go to the top of the seventh inning. It is a 4 nothing lead. Highlanders three outs away from winning game number one. Five, six, seven spot due up for ABAC. Ava Rowland, the catcher, will lead it off as she will face Taylor Beagle. First pitch on the way. Ground ball foul down the third base line. Ava Rowland today, a single in the second. Fly out to center in the fourth. The shortstop, Ashley Archibald, is on deck. She's 0 for 2 on the day. And then it's Anna Hutchison. She's 0 for 2 on the day. Again, Ava had a single in the top of the second. 4-0 ball game. Here comes the 0-1 from Beagle. This one misses outside, and it's 1-1. One one. Aback has missed a solo home run in their last two at-bats. They've had two balls hit the left field fence and just stayed in the ballpark. There comes the 1-1. One, one. This one out toward left again, and Reagan Waller. Did she make the catch? Yes, she did. <laughs> Reagan Waller, look what I found. We were joking yesterday about her superstitions before the ball games and how she ties her left shoe in a double knot and I think she just caught it off that left shoestring. It's the double knot. That's what it was. We're going to go with that. First down of the inning. There comes Archibald. First pitch at the knees, but a little low for ball one. Again, Reagan joined me yesterday on our baseball broadcast for about four innings. We're talking superstitions, all kind of fun stuff. And ties one shoe in a double knot, the other shoe in a single knot. This one floats in a little high, and it's 2-0. and oh. Whatever works, and obviously it worked out there, so we're going to go with it. One out, nobody on, top of the seventh. Game one of our doubleheader. Taylor Beagle trying to shut it down. Here comes the pitch. That one's downstairs, and it's 3-0. and oh. Just one walk issued in the ballgame for the Highlanders. Munoz gave up a walk in the top of the third to lead off the top of the third. 3-0 count. Here it comes. There's a strike inside, and it's 3-1. And Ashley Archibald, the shortstop at the plate. One out, nobody on, top of the seventh. Facing Taylor Beagle in her second inning. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. This one grounded foul down the third baseline, and now it's full at 3-2. Three, three balls, two strikes, one out. Anna Hutchinson in the on-deck circle. Three-run homer for the Highlanders. The big shot so far. That was in the bottom of the fifth off the bat of Valley McGee. Full count. Beagle's ready. The payoff pitch. Pop foul. Left field line. And it's going to get out of play. We'll do it again. A run in the fourth. That came on a two-out bunt down the third base line off of Emma Smith. Laney McGee threw it over to first, but the second baseman, Delana Barton, was late to get there. And a run came in to score for the Highlanders. 3-2 pitch. This one ripped foul again down the left field line. That brought in a run for the Highlanders in the fourth. And then in the fifth again, three run homer by Allie McGee. Full count, three balls, two strikes. Beagle's ready, here it comes. Swing and a miss. Kate will tag the batter and there's a second out of the inning. So from a 3-0 count to a strikeout. Two down and here comes Anna Hutchinson. <laughs> She is 0 for 2 on the day with two strikeouts. Last hope here for Abag. Takes the first pitch strike. Oh, one count. Nobody on. Two outs. Beagle's ready. Here he comes. Swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. Now the Highlanders just one strike away from a victory. 
here in game number one. Let's see if Beagle can shut it down. 0-2 count. She's got her side. Here it comes. Ripped to third, and Emma Gable's got it. That's why they call it the hot corner. And Emma Gable will squeeze it and put a lid on game number one. Highlanders win it. Four nothing shutout. And they will take game one of the doubleheader here this afternoon in seven innings. Mooney goes five, Beagle goes two, and they hold a back scoreless. And that will end the 10 game winning streak for the Phillies. Highlanders pick up their seventh consecutive win. And now we get ready for game number two. Quick timeout. We'll come back and recap this one right after this here from Barnesville. Dedication, compassion, and integrity. We've got the experience and expertise. When you need some help and you feel like there's nowhere to go. Become family. Hey fans, how would you like to save at your next stop at the pump? Well, thanks to the May and Carter Oil Company, you can. All you have to do is download the new BP Me app today. It's free and it's available for Apple and Android devices. With the new BP Me app, you can save five cents per gallon at any BP location across the U.S. Download the new BP Me app today and let the May and Carter Oil Company show you how you can save five cents per gallon on your next fill up. Final score in game number one, Gordon State wins it by a final of four to nothing. Again, the Highlanders got a run in the bottom of the fourth and then the big three-run homer off the bat of Ali McGee in the bottom of the fifth inning, and that's enough to win the first game of our afternoon doubleheader. Again, with the win, Highlanders continue their winning streak. It's now up to seven, and they end the 10-game winning streak that ABAC came in with this afternoon. Glad to have you here with us inside the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth. I'm Chad Feltman. What an impressive game one. I'm telling you, this place is packed here at the ballpark today. It's got that playoff kind of atmosphere and two great teams going at it here today. And just like the Highlanders did in Tifton back in March, they win game number one. Now they'll try to go for the sweep here in game number two. As promised, coming up here in 60 seconds, right here in this very broadcast booth, I'm going to be joined by a couple of Gordon State sophomores. Emma Gable and Sydney Knight are going to be joining me. We're going to go one-on-one, -on -one, presented by Countryside Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. It's your chance to meet the team, and it gives us an opportunity to honor one of our 11 sophomores here today on sophomore day. So that's coming up, 60 seconds, game one final, team working on the field. We'll be back for game number two in about 30 minutes. Coming up in 60 seconds, one-on-one -on -one with Emma Gable and Sydney Knight. That's coming up next. Spring is here, and Countryside Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Jackson and Madison are ready to help you hit the road. Ram Truck Month is back, and this month you can save big on our remaining 2023 Ram trucks, up to $15,000 on select 2023 models. Looking for a new Jeep? We've got them! And during the Jeep Celebration event, we're offering savings up to $16,000 on our 2023 Jeep Gladiators, and savings up to $15,000 on our 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees. We've also got the area's best supply of new 2023 Dodge Chargers and Dodge Challengers. Hellcats, Scat Packs, RTs, and Last Call Editions. All available today. Shop our huge online inventory at CountrysideAutomotive.com. While you're there, apply for easy financing. And this month, let's find your new ride at Countryside. I-75 exit 205 in Jackson and I-20 exit 114 in beautiful Madison, Georgia. Welcome in, everybody, to the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth right behind home plate here at Gordon State College. I'm Chad Feltman with K13 Media, and today it is sophomore day at Gordon State College as we are riding between games one and two today against ABAC. And 
I'm almost in tears because this is it. Our final one-on-one meet the team segment we'll do this season. And I guess we kind of saved the best for last. At least that's what y'all are going to go with, right? We've got Emma Gable all the way to the far left and Sydney Knight right here in the middle celebrating senior day at Go- God almighty, I knew I was going to do it. Sophomore day. <laughs> it's almost like senior day in high school. Yeah. And that's what I keep trying to compare it to. Today we are celebrating our sophomores for the Gordon State College softball team. There's 11 of them, and I've got two of them right here with me for our one-on-one segment. First of all, congratulations. Thank sophomores you. here at Gordon Thank State, is it, uh, is it sunk in yet that the end is starting to get closer and closer? Yeah, for me it has. There's definitely going to be some tears today. A little bit of tears <laughs> I'm like, today. are you about to cry? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Emma with some tears. See it. How about you? Um, I cried last night whenever she posted um, it on Instagram and the the song the good the good times go by too fast. They do. They absolutely so. do. And I can't believe here we are. We've only got one more home game after today, but we're celebrating sophomore day here on this Saturday. And a pretty good team. We're doing it against ABAC. Uh, boy, two hot softball teams in here today. And again, we're right in between game one and game two of our doubleheader here today. And uh, I, I got to start on this real quick. Before I even get to the questions, we were supposed to do this interview <laughs> about two weeks ago and we had some equipment malfunction on us. But we are back here today and I have been waiting to ask Emma this for about three weeks oh, now. God. Because I could have swore either I heard her say this, I either dreamed this or who knows. Oh, but God. Did I hear you correctly last time we were sitting at this table when you said you did not play high school softball? I didn't. That is right. I um, went to like a smaller private school, so we didn't have a softball team. So I played volleyball for four years in high school. And then I played travel ball, obviously, but I never played on a high school softball team now. But you played travel softball while you were high school age or whatever? Or was this yes. the first time ever? That- no. like okay. I played travel ball like since okay. I was like really young, but um, I never played like for us. Uh, I never played softball for, like, my high school team. That is I played so volleyball weird. for four years in high school. So wild. And I, I swore I heard her say it, and I was like, wait a minute, did she really say it? So it's just <laughs> hard to believe that no high school softball, and here she is absolutely just – dominating on the softball. <laughs> I wonder if you two lead the team in home runs. No. Skyler, maybe? It's Skyler has seven, I have six, and then Cindy has three. Four. 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 Okay, so we got some home run hitters on this softball team. I think 23 home runs hit this year for the yeah. Highlanders, something like that. I had some stats pulled up Which earlier. Which is a lot, but last year we had like 70-something. 70 something. Like, yeah. This is like the least we've had in like years. Like, years since Coach Adderman's been here. Like, this is the least amount of home so runs So, 23 is a bad year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> very, I'm, I'm sitting very here bad. Every broadcast, oh, there's two this game, three this no. game. They're flying out of the ballpark. No. <laughs> just a slow year with only 23. Yeah. So, well, these young ladies right here have definitely done their part hitting the long ball this year. And, again, sophomore day here at Gordon State College. Are y'all ready to answer some questions? Oh, Are you yeah. ready to be put to the test? Oh, yeah. All right. Here we go, Sid. You don't sound too confident. So, oh, and don't good. be sitting here looking at my cheat sheet, <laughs> doggone it. We are not cheating on this test. I will fail you today on your final exam. I will, oh, uh, like I tell every other of the team members who come up here with me, there's no particular order. Whoever wants to jump in first, if you want to throw a bow or something and catch Emma in the eye, that's fine too, Sid, if you want to get the first answer. If y'all want to alternate, however you want to do it, I'll let y'all decide. But let's start like we do every single one-on-one interview with birthdays. Tell me when we're celebrating birthdays. I know, Sid, yours was recently uh, three weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Something like that. Give us the day once again. Uh, March 19th. So we almost got a full year to prepare for her next birthday. <laughs> we're almost there. Emma, how about you? Uh, mine's July 17th. Okay, so yeah. Emma's is coming up. Yeah. She's the baby on the team. Are you really? No, I'm not. No, but not the baby. Close to it, but not the baby. I'm one of the younger ones. So how old will you be in July? I'll only be 20. Only 20? Yeah. And Sid, you just turned 20? I just turned 20. 20. Okay. Yeah. And Gotcha. Not even legal to drink yet. (laughs) 20-year-olds here at the table with us. All right, let's talk about hometowns. Emma, we'll start with you. Where were you born? Where's your hometown? Um, I was born in Hampton, Georgia. It's about 40, 35 minutes north of here. Um, Yeah. Very familiar with Hampton. Yeah. They got a little racetrack over there. Little, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like my playground. I love that place. That, yeah, that is fun. like my piece of heaven on earth over at Atlanta mm-hmm. Motor Speedway. So it's fun. Hampton, Georgia, for Emma Sid. How about you, hometown? Um, Yatesville, Georgia. Woo, big city. <laughs> population five. Man, twenty uh, percent of their population is missing today because Sid's here with us <laughs> in Barnesville. So it's okay, Yatesville. We promise we'll return her home and she'll be in good shape. So, all right. How about nicknames for you two? Anything good? Um, a lot of people, well, my full name is Emma Lynn, 
So I guess Emma is technically a nickname. Um, some people call me M. I hear Irma. Yeah, a lot. Irma. All right, explain so, that because I'm sitting here looking at my roster. <laughs> Who is Irma and where is she on my roster? So, so help me out. Last year, my best friend Kellen played on the team. Okay. And I started calling her Kel Dog because okay. her name is Kellen. So Kel Dog. And so then she started calling me Irma, and <laughs> it just kind of stuck. And now some of my family even calls me that. So That's I pretty guess good though. I like there it. There we go. It Irma. Sticks. I've been sitting here all year like, I do not have an Irma on my <laughs> roster. I would feel like an idiot. So thank you for clarifying. Yeah. All right, Sid, uh, how about you? Are we Sydney today or are we uh, got an alter ego we're going by? <laughs> um, well, Depends you Depends on the hair color is what it <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. So. Well, you said my nickname. Um, Sid is a big one. I really don't like Sid, honestly. So I won't call you Sid no more then. Oh, it doesn't bother me. Oh, yes, I'm it does. Used you to just it said now. you didn't like it. Sid I'm the kid. used to it by now. Sid, Sid kid? Sid, Sid the kid. Sid the Scientist. kid. Scientist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my aunt calls me Squidward. That's oh. her nickname for okay. me. Okay. There you Squidward. go. <laughs> um, Squidward. Uh, when I was little, I used to be, get called Butterbean a lot. So just whatever fits, I guess. So she's got quite a few to go with. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. What are we majoring in and studying here at Gordon State College? Um, aren't we the same? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm a, bio, I'm a bio, biology major. Very nice. Biology for Sid. Excuse um, me. Uh, Squidward. Squidward. <laughs> Butterbean. Can't call her Sid. Doesn't matter. It doesn't Ir- matter. Irma, how about you over there? Um, I am a nursing major. Okay. Um, I'm going to start the ASN program in January. That's my plan. And Very then, nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, favorite or lucky numbers? Um, 32 and 17 for me, which is my birthday, and then obviously my number. <laughs> Sydney, how about you? Um, 33 or 19 probably. So you wear 33. What's, what's so significant about 19? Um, well, it's the day I was born, but it's just something different. Okay, there you go. I'm an oddball. I like odd numbers. That's fine. Uh, three is my favorite number, so odd number as well. So there we go. Uh, favorite vacation spots? Where do you girls like to go and just relax and chill? The beach. Yeah, the okay. beach. Um, Any particular beach location? Yeah, we go to, um, well, I say we. Um, I actually went just with my boyfriend and his family last year to Anna Marie Island. Very nice. In Florida, and, like, I really liked it there. So, I think I like it better than, like, Panama City and stuff. It's really pretty. So. Anna Marie Island. How about you, Sid? Uh, the Bahamas. Ooh. <laughs> Very nice. Do you fly or do you cruise to the Bahamas? Cruise. Cruise, okay. I've never been, but we a, go cruise, on a cruise a, every year. A cruise to the Bahamas is certainly on top of my bucket list. <laughs> yeah. it, it is approaching quickly, I Aww. promise you. All right, favorite movies? Oh, cool. Uh, I don't watch fa- movies. I hate or, movies. Or, or TV shows. If you okay. don't do movies, fav- we'll go with favorite TV show. Um, my favorite TV show is probably Grey's Anatomy. Okay. Get a lot of Grey's Anatomy here. What is so great about Grey's Anatomy? I've never watched an episode I, of it. I've rewatched Something it. Something tells so me many it's times. not for guys like me. I just <laughs> no. kind of got this feeling. Yeah, so. no, probably no. not. Um, it, I just like it. I think I like it because I'm going in the medical field, so it's just like fun. Even though I know it's fake, it's just kind of fun to watch. Makes sense. That. Makes sense. Sid, favorite movie or uh, TV show? Um, probably Virgin River. Never heard of it. That one's pretty good too. It's on I Netflix. Love Netflix. River. Okay. Yes. All right. Netflix. Or Outer Banks. I like Outer Banks a lot. All right. If you could turn into any animal, what are you turning into? And what? why? <laughs> Complete answers. What are you turning into and why? So, I actually asked Coach Hatterman this, and she said I would be a squirrel. You would be yeah. a squirrel. I could see you as a squirrel. <laughs> I really could. I, I get that. That fits. I don't I don't stay focused at all. <laughs> I, my brain goes elsewhere. Emma makes fun of me all the time in class because I'm all the time just. She always tries to talk to me, and I'm like, can you be quiet? I'm trying to focus. <laughs> or it's either, like, like, the most random things. Like, like I'll quiet. remember in class, like. The worst is when I'm in the shower and I remember something, and by the time I get out, I forget it. Even if it's important, it's I still problems. forget it. I'm, I'm the same way with memory. How about you over there, Emma? Um, I think I would probably be a dolphin. Uh, I really like the beach, and I really like being in the water, and I really like dolphins. Stuff. I've got a lot of cheetahs, a lot of lions, a lot of, you know, cats. That's the first dolphin <laughs> yeah. I've had for baseball, basketball, or softball. Oh, wow. Yeah, first dolphin here at the table. So, all right, uh, favorite Athletes, professional, mm-hmm. collegiate, current, mm-hmm. past, former, any sport. Do you have a favorite? Uh, I'm not really like – I like to watch sports, but I don't feel like I have like a favorite. Um, Honestly, right now, probably Caitlin Clark. I've loved yeah, watching her she's play. She's pretty good. She is fun to watch. I love and, watching her and play. And the WNBA is about to just go nuts. Every arena that the WNBA plays in with Caitlin Clark better find a way to start adding about 10,000 seats. 
She is uh, she is something else. So, yeah. Caitlin Clark for Sid, no answer for Emma. I mean, I like I really like watching Georgia football. Okay. So I guess like that. Well, Georgia, they're playing right now. Yeah, the spring game. I know. My, got, yeah. Got a favorite Georgia player? Anybody? Uh, probably Lad McConkey or like uh, Brock Bowers. They're there pretty good. Go. Yeah, All we right. like to watch them. Love it, love it. All right, let's see here. Uh, superpowers. If you could give yourself any superpower, what would you give yourself? I hate to admit it, but I'm like the nosiest person ever. So <laughs> I'd probably, <laughs> I'd like want to know everything. So I'd probably choose invisibility so I could like be there without you knowing so I could hear what's going Over on. Over mind reading? Yeah. Invisibility. Okay. Because right. I like to like peep in on people's conversations, but it would be easy if I was invisible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sid, how about you? Um, I'd be able to teleport anywhere. Teleport has been a popular answer among the panel this year. So, All right. Favorite band or musician? Oh, wow. You have one particular artist that you just like jam to. I hear at the speakers here, it's like Rihanna's greatest hits oh, at God. the ballpark. <laughs> I don't really like her, but <laughs> that's what they put on there. Um, Country, rock, R&B, hip-hop, rap. You got a favorite style? or? I probably listen to country and like rap the most. Um, I think for country, who would I have to choose? Sid, you can chime in anytime. Oh, um, mine would definitely be Riley Green or Morgan Wallen. Yeah, that's probably Morgan Wallen probably. I was really at the ones? Riley Green concert yeah. last Thursday. Down in Macon? How was, was the show? It was great. Was it? A it lot of great. them went. Like, a lot of the team went. I hear Riley Green puts on a great show. I missed an opportunity to see him at Talladega Super Speedway a couple of years ago oh, on yeah, Saturday fine. night, and I kicked myself in the butt. But <laughs> Harry puts on a great show. Um, what's the song, Grandpa's Never Die? Yeah. That's, every time I hear it, it's he just, just like, He just dropped an album oh, yesterday. Man. Mm-hmm. man, I love that song. So. I know, it's His good. new album is so good. He just released it yesterday. All right, love to Riley Green here on the broadcast. we have to go and check out some uh, Riley Green music when we get done today. <laughs> Favorite food. What is your go-to food that you just could eat all day, every day? Chick-fil-A. What's on the menu? What's your item? Oh, definitely uh, number one with cheese. Number one with cheese. There you go. Mayonnaise or Chick-fil-A sauce? Mayonnaise. Okay. Um, mine's probably wings or steak. How about both? Yeah. I both. mean, that's a great combination. Yeah. <laughs> steak and wings. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, all right. One thing you've always wanted to do, but you have not done it yet. Top of your bucket list. Mm-hmm. Skydive. Popular answer. Emma, how about you? Well, I would say skydiving, but I did that for my 18th birthday. Did you? I did. How was it? It was so fun. I did it over in Thomaston at the airport. Okay. Yeah, Is that the one around 36, right? Mm-hmm. What they do? Okay. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, but I think, like, on the top of my bucket list would be to go, like, on a cruise and go to the Bahamas and swim with the pigs. Swim with the pigs? Yeah, have you never seen the pigs in the no, ocean? I thought, I thought you messed up when you said that. You no, were doing it. no, yeah. yeah there's like the pigs, pigs in the ocean and you can swim with them. In the Bahamas? Yes. I was going to do it last wow, year. Wow, okay. That is a first. I didn't know you could swim with the pigs. Yeah, now you, there you go. You want to go? You can make sure you do that when you go. I, mean, I, I, gonna... I fit in real good with them. You know, oh, my kinda, God. You know, pigs are pigs, so, but swim with the pigs. I can see the dolphins. But. No, the pigs. I was right. going to do it, but I had shoulder surgery, so I wasn't clear to be able to swim with them. But we were going to swim with the pigs last year. I never in my life You can even just you Google, it. like, pigs swim. in Bahamas, yeah. and it'll pull up pictures. I want to know more about the skydiving thing when, when yeah. you were in the, the plane. How high up? Did they tell you how up you were? Oh, God. I think we went, I want to say fifteen to 20,000 feet. And how long did it take from the time you jumped out to land? Did, did they I don't, time it? Or? I don't remember if they really timed it. I know... I free fall. I free fell for a pretty good bit, so that obviously went pretty quick. And then once you like pull the pair, like the thing, it, it slows down a lot. Do you so. lose your breath when you do it? Kind of like when you're at a roller coaster going down, and all of a sudden you just you're gasping for air. Like do you catch um, up, or is it just pretty calm the whole way? Yeah, for me it wasn't really like that because when I jumped out, I kind of like. I mean, you, and the thing is, like, when you get up there, you can't, there's, like, no turning back because the person that's with you is behind you, so they kind of fall, and you just go with them. Like, you can't be like, oh, no. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Start over. So, um, <laughs> I kind of just, like, screamed when I jumped, okay. so I really don't think I, like, lost my breath or anything. Love it. Love it. There's a little more explanation on skydiving. We've got Did Emma Gable. Did you land on your butt? And Sydney Knight here with us. Or did you land on your feet? Um, well, that's for, a good question, Sid. For mine, it was um, pretty windy that day, so we couldn't land on our feet. Feet, so we did have to lean on our butts. 
how hard of a landing? I mean, was it, it just like a ow or is it like a <laughs> smooth? It was pretty smooth. Okay. I'm pretty sure the guy that I was with <laughs> took most of the fall. Okay. So, like, I was, I, I hit him and I slid pretty smooth. It's kind of alarming and concerning when you hear you're jumping out of a plane, first of all. I know, by the way, you're going to land on your butt. <laughs> it's like, it's uh, not that bad. It's not I don't know that. About I would this. do it again. All right, biggest pet peeves. Well, i got a few more questions left. Biggest pet peeves for you. You can go first because I know I get you on this one all the time. When people oh smack and drink loud, I can't do it. Like, drink guys, loud? Like if you take a sip of your drink and you're like, like you go, oh, like I gotcha. can't do it. I can't. Okay. All right. See it. She How about hasn't you? told you this one, but hers is when I like tap. Oh, yeah. Or when I people have, like like that with their okay. fingernails. I have a bad habit of like moving i shake my leg i tap like and if i'm laying down my feet constantly move Something's and they hate moving. it uh, they hate yeah. it when i do it but mine's probably when you leave me on red or whenever i ask you a question and you like if i ask you two questions and you just say yeah no answer just yeah just, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably my biggest two is when i get left on red when i have a question <laughs> or whenever i ask you two different things and all your responses yeah complete or k like okay yeah. okay is the worst what about okay is That's that fine. okay just not k just not k you could put the o and i think i or if you put a period on the end of something like if i if it's like okay period yeah. you don't like the periods mm-hmm. it makes you sound mad really yeah i knew all caps was like you were screaming but i didn't <laughs> yeah. know a period made you sound mad oh yeah, yeah. man like, i've learned so much here today <laughs> this I think is an, awesome another thing that i don't like is when people say like sure like, if you're like, hey, you want to go to the store with me? And they're like, sure. I'm like, yeah, no, just don't go with me. Because that makes it seem like you're only going because I want you to go, not because you want to go. Right. So I'm like, You yeah, want no. them to want to go. Yeah. So I want you to be like, yeah, I want to <laughs> go with you. Not sure. Okay. Period. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, nah. All right. A few more questions for you. Uh, let's see here. Game day superstitions. I was having fun with this question yesterday at our baseball game because I had four or five of the softball players joining me, and I learned some crazy superstitions. Uh, Reagan Waller, by the way, has one of the weirdest <laughs> game days. Day, the way she ties her shoes Oh, gosh, on game I can days. see that with her. Double knot on the right foot, single knot on the left foot. <laughs> Um, I learned that uh, hairstyling, apparently Allie McGee is like the official hairstylist of the team. Yeah. She loves doing that. So uh, how about you ladies? Any crazy game day superstitions? Do you remember mine? Your memory is as good as mine. When you were talking about getting out of the shower and couldn't remember, I can't remember (laughs) that. Tell Uh, me again. Do you you remember? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mine is probably doing my hair and makeup before game. That's right. Because if you look good, you feel good, you play good. That's right. The T-shirt. Look good, feel good, play good. We got to get that for Sid. Emma, how about you? Game um, day superstitions. I always do my hair the same way. I put it in like this half braid, so it always is the same. And Sid, I see you got a ribbon in your hair. I you did. did say that yesterday. I do always wear a ribbon too. Okay, so. Sid did say she has to have yeah. a ribbon on game day. So. It's gotten to where I have to have a game day tea every day. A game day tea. All right. Some sweet <laughs> tea would s- sound good right about oh, now. Oh, it's not sweet tea. It's no? the from the tea place. Tea. Oh, okay, the, the nutrition tea. Yeah, okay, I had gotcha. seven of them today when I walked in the locker room. There's one in Forsyth. I forget the name of the place. Bulldog. Oh, they, they, yeah, they call it a, a roadrunner, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that is awesome. All right, bonus points for any fans who bring us some nutrition teas today. My mom's supposed to be bringing one, so we'll see. There you go. Mom, <laughs> we need two, if you don't mind. My favorite <laughs> is Blue Hawaiian. What's in it? Never had it. Uh, blue raspberry. God, you put me on the spot. Pineapple. And I can't remember. Isn't the other it blue one. sour? Maybe. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I ha- used to work there, so my. I, I have whatever Emma's spot. having today. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see. Proudest achievement Ooh. so far. I know it's sophomore day today. We are celebrating 11 of you sophomores. Proudest achievement so far in your lives. All 20 years. Well, 19 and some <laughs> for Emma down there. Um, I would say, honestly, just coming to play college softball because um, my stepdad passed away when I was 16, and he was kind of, like, really big in my softball career. And so after he passed away, I kind of was, like, just about to, like, quit. Like, I didn't really want to do it anymore. But, um, you know, Coach Hunterman gave me the opportunity to come play here. So I'm just really proud of myself for, like, pushing forward and still, like, coming to live out the dream that we both had for myself. Very well said. Very well said. I'm sure he'd be super proud. Thank you. Absolutely. Sid? Um, probably getting the opportunity to play here and getting into one of the biggest pharmacy schools in the state of Georgia. Congratulations. Very so. nice. All right, favorite holidays? Mm-hmm. Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. Christmas for both. And if you could go anywhere on earth, this is our final question. If you could travel anywhere, all expenses paid, you get a week stay, the fanciest of accommodations, where are you going? Anywhere on earth. 
swimming with a pig sounds pretty uh, cool. I'm yeah. not going to lie. That's, that's um, pretty interesting. <laughs> I think if I had to go to a different place, I would go to South Africa and see, like, the giraffes and, like, the safari kind cool. of feel. I think that's where I'd go. That'd be fun until you see, like, a rhino eating <laughs> another animal yeah, and you start and crying. Yeah. It's like, I'm just a big baby as it is. Yeah, you know, I know. I'm sitting here thinking, you know, there's Bambi's mom sitting there, you know, getting devoured by a lion. I know. I don't think I could do that anymore, so... Sorry, I didn't mean to get emotional on y'all. <laughs> That's okay. I did a minute ago. <laughs> How about oh, you, Sid? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere on earth. I don't know if I would rather go to the beach or go on a hunting trip. A hunting trip? Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't so, know. So Sid has no problem killing the animals. We were no. just talking about that, Sid. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. All right. Well, think about it. Hunting uh, trip. What if there was a way to go hunting at the beach? No. No? You can kind of. Can't you do like that bow thing where you shoot the animal in the water? The spear fishing? Can spear I yeah, maybe, it? yeah. There you go. That's you gotta <laughs> but also, I've seen people like shoot the bow in the water. I don't know. That's spear I know. fishing. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Whatever. You can go down to the Bahamas and take out some pigs. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Do some hunting in the oh Bahamas. My God. I Love don't know. It. I'd probably want to go kill like a big old deer in like another country. There you go. That's just like. An exotic hunting trip. You could do that in South Africa probably. They probably got some big animals there. You could probably come down I'm my thinking. road in Jackson and see some really big deer. <laughs> I swear it's like yeah. my road I live on is like I'm thinking just crazy. more of like Europe. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Hunting trip to Europe. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of One on One presented by Countryside Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram in Jackson, Georgia. And again, it's going to wrap up our one on one feature for the year. We've been able to sit and chat with every single sophomore on this Highlander softball team. But again, we are celebrating sophomore day today. After game number two, we'll have a special ceremony right here on the field. 11 of our sophomores will be celebrated today, including the two I have here with me today, Sydney Knight and Emma Gable. Ladies, thank you all so much for joining me here at the table, and thank you for letting me be a part of your team this year. It's been a blast, and you ladies have been so much fun to watch this year. I really appreciate it. Yeah. We've loved having you, and I can tell you a lot of people love your broadcast. Yeah, for okay. sure. Thank a lot of people thank love Thank you for it. all you do for us. Well, thank you all very much. It's been a blast. Thank you all for tuning in. Yes. Don't go far. We're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, we'll be getting closer to game number two. Today is Gordon State, and it's A back double header in Barnesville a timeout and game two coming up next right here live with k13 media stand by go highlanders spring is here and countryside chrysler dodge jeep ram in jackson and madison are ready to help you hit the road ram truck month is back and this month you can save big on our remaining 2023 ram trucks up to fifteen thousand dollars on select 2023 models looking for a new jeep we've got them and during the jeep celebration event we're offering savings up to sixteen thousand dollars on our 2023 jeep gladiators and savings up to fifteen thousand dollars on our 2023 jeep Jeep Grand Cherokees. We've also got the area's best supply of new 2023 Dodge Chargers and Dodge Challengers. Hellcats, Scat Packs, RTs, and Last Call Editions. All available today. Shop our huge online inventory at CountrysideAutomotive.com. While you're there, apply for easy financing. And this month, let's find your new ride at Countryside. I-75 exit 205 in Jackson and I-20 exit 114 in beautiful Madison, Georgia. Welcome back, everybody, to Gordon State College here in Barnesville as we are getting closer and closer to the start of game number two. If you're just tuning in, the Highlanders took game one today by a final of four to nothing as we welcome you back inside the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth. Happy to have you here with us. Happy to have this great crowd we have here with us as well today on sophomore day. Four nothing win in game number one, and now we're getting ready to go in game number two. The big blow, the big hit for the Highlanders today came in the bottom of inning number five in that first game when Allie McGee hit a three-run shot to right center field. That put us up 4 nothing. Pitching, fantastic. Mooney went five. Beagle went the final two. And the Highlanders were able to shut out Aback in game number one and end the Phillies' 10-game winning streak. The Highlanders, well, they're streaking themselves. They've won seven straight games. As we get ready to go for game number two, the umpires have just walked out on the field. And here in just a few moments, we should be getting the lineup cards and the coaches meeting at home plate for game number two. Glad to have you here with us again coming up after the ball game today. All the fans in attendance, we will have our sophomore day ceremony. Eleven sophomores joining us 
at Gordon State College for softball this year. A couple of those just wrapped up with us here at the table with Sydney Knight and Emma Gable. And uh, what a fun interview that was. Happy to have them here with us. And always nice to get to know the team. And that'll be our final one-on-one -on -one that we'll do this season. Just one more home game for the Highlanders after today, and that'll be against Andrew College later on in the month. So happy to have them here with us. Happy to have you here with us as well. We're going to take a quick timeout. I've got the starting lineups in my hand, and when we come back on the other side of this break, I will bring them to you, and we should be inching closer to the first pitch of game number two. It's ABAC. It's Gordon State. We are live in Barnesville for K13 Media's live coverage of Gordon State College Highlander Softball. Glad to have you here with us. When it comes to printing, there's only one name to remember. Georgia Signs and Print. From banners, yard signs, magnets, life-size cutouts, and vinyl, Georgia Signs and Print is the locally owned printer there for all your printing needs. Need graphics for your company vehicles and windows? How about commercial signs and screen print? Georgia Signs and Print can handle it all. Plus, they offer the fastest turnaround time and no minimum order requirement. No job too big, no job too small. If you're looking for a local printer who offers the best customer service, highest quality, and quickest turnaround time, Georgia Signs and Print is your local printer. For more details, visit Georgia Signs and Print on Facebook. At Georgia Signs and Print, we make it our business to showcase your business. Georgia Signs and Print, proud sponsors of the K13 Media Player of the Game Award. Hey, want to say congratulations, too, to Allie McGee. She was our Georgia Science and Print player of the game for game number one, the three-run homer in the bottom of the fifth inning, the big hit for the Highlanders. So Allie McGee is going to get that free meal to Mama's Kitchen right here in Barnesville. We'll give away another award coming up at the end of game number two. As you can see, the head coach is meeting right now. On the left, that is Coach Reed in his first season. As the head coach for ABAC, on the right, Coach Allie Hatterman in her 25th season as the head coach for the Highlanders. And right now it is time to bring you today's starting lineups for game number two presented by Buckner's Family Restaurant in Jackson, Georgia. They look very similar, but not exactly the same. First for ABAC, Lexi Metz will lead it off and play center field. Laney McGee will play third and bat second. Carter Gore is back at first. She will bat third. Allie Ibsen will bat fourth. She's in right field. Ava Rowland will catch and bat fifth. Trinity Odom, new to the lineup in game two. She will bat sixth and play left field. Anna Hutchison, who pitched last game, will bat seventh and be the DP in this one. Ashley Archibald will bat eighth. She will play shortstop. And Taylor Hodges, new into the lineup for game number two. She will bat ninth and play second base. Starters for Gordon State. Emma Smith will lead it off and play right field. Maddie Neal will bat second and play second. Emma Gable bats third. She is over at third base. Skylar Evans will bat fourth. She's at first base today. Allie McGee in the lineup. She will catch in game number two and bat fifth. Joni Littlejohn back at shortstop. She'll bat sixth. Sydney Knight in the lineup. She will be the DP in game number two. She will bat seventh. Reagan Waller back out in left field. She'll bat eighth. And Kendall Rollins will play center field, and she will bat ninth. In the circle pitching, starting game number two today for Gordon State. Once again, it's going to be Caitlin Munoz. She went five innings and got the win in game number one. And in the circle pitching here today in game number two for ABAC, it is a freshman out of Long County, Georgia, Ludowisi, Georgia. It is number 22, J.C. Smiley. So it'll be Smiley versus Mooney in game number two of our afternoon doubleheader. Again, Highlanders won the first one. They'll try to go for the sweep here in the second one this afternoon. Glad to have you here with us. Again, I'm Chad Feltman with K13 Media coming to you live today inside the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth. Packed house here at the ballpark. Baseball teams in action. Last check in the seventh inning. They were tied 9-9 nine to nine with Andrew College. They're still in game number one of their doubleheader. And again, 4 nothing was the final in game one of our double here, uh, doubleheader here for our Highlanders softball team. Highlanders now back to 500 on the season, 16 and 16 overall, and winners of seven straight games. Going to try to make it eight in a row, and boy, how big that would be if we could find a way to knock off A back here in 
the second game. Just about ready to go. Again, it's going to be Kaitlyn Munoz in the circle pitching. In game number two, she's got Allie McGee catching and leading it off here for ABAC. It's going to be the center fielder, Lexi Metz. Glad to have you here. It's a beautiful Saturday in Barnesville, and it is time to play ball at Gordon State College. Game number two starts now. Mooney in the circle, toes the rubber, Mets at the plate. Here's the first pitch, and just like game one, it's in there for a strike at 3.01 p.m. Today's first pitch in game two being presented by Countryside Mower in downtown Jackson. 0-1 in for a strike, and it's quickly nothing in two. Countryside Mower, the place to go this spring if you're looking for a new zero-turn mower. Over 200 Gravely and Aaron's zero turns in stock. Swing and a miss, and on three straight pitches. There's the first out here in the top of the first inning. Lexi Metz goes down. One up, one down. Good start for Mooney. And here comes the third baseman, Laney McGee. Just underway, top of the first of game number two. Here's the first pitch, fouled out of play over toward the baseball field. And that's going to be strike one. Our tally mark has two foul balls that we've taken on this field today for baseballs. Trying to figure how many we're going to get before the day's over with. 0-1 oh, count. Here's the pitch from Mooney. Popped up, infield, foul territory. First baseline, Skyler Evans right at the on-deck circle. She will put it away, and that's going to be the second out. So two up, two down. Good start for the Highlanders here on the top of inning number one. And coming to the plate is going to be the first baseman, Carter Gore. Two outs, nobody on. It was scoreless through three and a half in the first game. Gordon State got a run in the bottom of the fourth and in three in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch swinging and fouling it out of play. It's nothing in one. Aback missed two solo home runs in the fifth and the sixth. They hit a ball off the top of the left field fence in the fifth and one off the top of the left center field fence in the sixth. Here's the 0-1 inside. And it's one and one. Wind blowing in from left field definitely helped keep those balls in the ballpark. Here comes the 1-1. Chop foul at the plate, and it's 1-2. and two. If it were any other day where this wind has just not been as crazy as it's been the last 24 hours, those would have been home runs easily. But instead, they were doubles off the fence. Munoz and Beagle were able to Keep A back off the board. Here it comes. This one popped up infield again toward first base. Who wants it? It's going to be Skyler Evans calling off Ali McGee. And it's going to be a 1 2 3 inning here for the Highlanders. Good start from Mooney and Gordon State. They set down the Phillies in order after a half inning of play. No score in game number two. We're going to the bottom of the first live today in Barnesville. Hello friends, this is Pastor Benny Tate of Rock Springs Church. I have one question for you. Are there any dog fans here today? If you love the University of Georgia football, you are in for a special treat. I'd like to personally invite you to Rock Springs Church on Sunday, May the 5th, as I interview Georgia's quarterback, Carson Beck, at all of our services. You can find more information about our campus location and service times online at rockspringsonline.com. I hope to see you Sunday, May the 5th at Rock Springs Church as I interview quarterback Carson Beck of the Georgia Bulldogs. I'll see you then. We are heading to the bottom of inning number one in game number two. Once again, first three due up for the Highlanders. Emma Smith, Maddie Neal, and Emma Gable. And today they will be facing J.C. Smiley, a lefty out of Long County High School in Ludowisi, Georgia. No score. Emma Smith will lead it off. First pitch on the way outside, and there's ball one. 
I went down to Ludowisi two years ago to broadcast a high school postseason tournament. It took me four days to pronounce the name of the city correctly. Here's the 1-0. There's a strike. He was the count at 1-1. One one. Long County, Georgia. I've been all over this state. This is my 20th year broadcasting sports in Georgia. 1-1 one, one count. Slap down the left field line, and it's going to get down for a foul ball. Kind of like the old Johnny Cash song. You know, I've been everywhere. Well, just about here in the state of Georgia to broadcast something. Started in 2004. Here we are in year number 20. And, boy, it has been a blast. Football, baseball, basketball, softball, even high school volleyball. And now college softball and baseball. Swing and a miss. And there's the first out in the bottom of inning number one. Emma Smith will go down swinging. Highlanders only struck out one time. In game number one, that came in the bottom of the sixth inning. And now it's going to bring up Matty Neal, former Pike County Pirate, batting second for the Highlanders. First pitch on the way. Foul back, and it's nothing in one. That Luda Wissy trip, though, man, that was a uh, – it must be something like, you know, when you're going somewhere for the first time, it always seems like it takes forever. Second, third, fourth time, it doesn't seem as bad, but I feel like it took four days to go down to Luda Wissy. Here's the 0-1 to Matty, swing and a miss on a high fastball, and it's quickly nothing in two. I regret now being in year number 20. I wish I would have started this 20 years ago, that I would have took a picture from every place I've ever broadcast a game from. Here's the 0-2 to Matty, ripped over towards short, but right at Ashley Archibald. Line drive off the bat of Matty Neal, but Ashley was in the right place at the right time. And that's the second out of the inning. And now it's going to bring up the third baseman, Emma Gable. Fun time with Emma in between games today. Going one-on-one -on -one with the sophomore here for the Highlanders. First pitch is in for a strike. Again, she told us that she never played high school softball. At her school where she went, it was a small private school in Hampton. They did not have high school softball, so she played volleyball. But she kept playing softball with her travel team, and that's how she was able to get here to Barnesville. Here comes the 0-1. Out, out of play, and it's nothing in two. Boy, could you imagine the high school player she could have been, though? One heck of a college softball player. Great defensive third baseman, good bat. 0-2 count. Here it comes. Out, out of play again. And the count remains nothing in two. Emma Gable at the plate. Skyler Evans in the on-deck circle. We're at the bottom of the first. No score, nobody on. Two outs. Game two of our doubleheader. Here comes the 0-2. Upstairs, check swing, and Emma was able to pull back. The peel down to first. She did not go. And it's one and two. Again, the Highlanders are battling the lefty, J.C. Smiley, wearing number 22, getting a start here in game two. 1-2 pitch, foul tip, just out of the glove of the catcher, Ava Rowland. And Emma Gable will live to see another pitch. Highlanders won the first one, four to nothing. Munoz pitched five, Beagle pitched the last two. 1-2 count, here it is, way upstairs, and it's two and two. Allie McGee had the three-run homer in the Fifth inning, she was our Georgia Science and Print player of the game, so she's getting the free meal to Mama's Kitchen. Can't wait to get over there tonight and try the Thai dog. Oh, boy, wait until you hear about this. 2-2, Two -two, fouled out of play. The Thai dog. I got to read my text right here from what Thomas sent me earlier, so I'll make sure I pronounce it correctly. Two certified. Oh, I'm going to tease you. Hold on. I'll tell you in between innings. 2-2 Two -two count. Here it comes. Foul out of play again. All right, here we go. Two certified Angus beef hot dogs smothered in scrambled meat, covered with queso cheese, and surrounded by French fries. It's called the Thai Dog, named after Lamar County High School quarterback Ty Head. So that's what's on the menu tonight after the ball game for yours truly over at Mama's Kitchen. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Foul out of play. Emma with a good battle. It's given us a chance to go through half the menu at Mama's Kitchen here in the bottom of the first. I know Thomas and Angie appreciate it. 
Happy birthday to Angie, by the way, over at Mama's Kitchen. She makes the best Arnold Palmers. Certified best with pink lemonade, not regular lemonade. Happy birthday to Miss Angie. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Nobody on. Bottom of the first inning. Pitch number 63 coming up here to Emma Gable. Here it is. Well, we'll do 64. Foul off again. What a battle between Emma Gable and J.C. Smiley. Let's see if Emma can, can win it and get Skyler to the plate here in the bottom of the first inning. Nobody on. Let's see what Smiley comes with on this 2-2. Here it is. Found how to play again. We may be out of softballs. There's no more in the rack over here in the on-deck circle. I don't know if the umpire has any more in his little pouch or not, but there's no more over here to the right. We normally keep nine over here in this rack, something like that. 2-2, two -two. here it is again. Grounded over towards second. Routine ground ball to Taylor Hodges, and she'll get it over to Carter Gore, and that will retire the side. So both pitchers. Able to retire the side in order. And just like that, we are quickly through one. No score here in Barnesville. Game two of our afternoon doubleheader. Roofing, gutters, siding, painting, concrete, fencing, and more. The list goes on and on. No matter what you need done around the home or office, advanced roofing and interiors can handle it all. Even major storm damage. No job too big or too small. When was the last time you checked the condition of your roof? Advanced Roofing and Interiors offers free roof inspections. Don't wait for issues to arise. Contact us today for a free roof inspection. Our expert team will provide an assessment, answer all of your questions, and ensure your peace of mind. Be sure to visit our Facebook page to see recently completed projects and read real customer reviews from real customers. Advanced Roofing and Interiors is locally owned and operated, licensed and insured, and works with all insurance companies. Visit us online at advancedroofingandinteriors.com to learn more and to see all services we offer. Welcome back to Barnesville. We're at the top of the second inning. No score. We just had our first tent fly away here in the crowd. Been waiting to see how long that was going to take, but there it went. Allie Eadson will lead it off for the Phillies. Top of the second. First pitch on the way. Strike at the knees from Munoz, and it's nothing in one. It'll be Allie Eadson, Ava Rowland, Trinity Odom. Four, five, and six coming to the plate. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. This one hit out toward right field. It's going to get down for a base hit. A leadoff single off the bat of Allie Eadson. And Abac has his first base runner of the game. Got to put a runner on first for the catcher, Ava Rowland. Mooney only gave up two hits in five innings in game one. But shown right in no man's land, and Mooney can't field it. It's to the left of Gable. And that's more of that bad luck we saw down in Tifton about a month ago. A bun off the bat of Roland, right in between the pitcher and third baseman. And now it's going to put runners on first and second, and here comes the left fielder, Trinity Odom. Trinity did not play in game number one. She shows bunt right back to Mooney. Mooney has it. Throw to first in time to Maddie Neal. First out of the inning. 1-3 on the putout. Sack bunt. Man, Mooney may have had time to look over to third, but she never looked that way. That bunt was so hard right back to the pitcher off of Odom's bat. But now Abak, runners on second and third. One out. First time today they've had a runner reach third base. First pitch strike inside to Anna Hutchinson. Anna was the pitcher in game number one for the Phillies. So you got runners on second and third. 0-1, hit off the fist toward third base, and Gable will let it roll foul. Just strike two. So an 0-2 count here on Hutchinson, former Ola Mustang from McDonough, Georgia. 
Aback with runners at second and third. One out, top of the second. Here's the pitch from Mooney. Fouled off the fist once again, and it remains nothing and two. Caitlin will check the wristband, get the code from the dugout. She's ready, and the go-to pitch. Fouled back to the fence. And thankfully, there's two extra zip ties on the camera today. Or that one may have been falling right down. Good battle here by Anna Hutchinson. Another 0-2. Hits this one out toward left where Reagan Waller is, and it's off of Reagan's glove. Run will come in to score. Throw to third is going to get away and all the way to the backstop. And that's the first run of the day for Abeck. An error in left off the glove of Reagan Waller. Will let a run come in. It allows Hutchinson to get all the way to second. So an error in left, bad luck on a bunt. And now Ashley Archibald will come to the plate. First pitch strike outside, it's nothing and one. Allie Edson led it off with a single to right, a bunt single by Rowland. And now an error in left, it's one nothing A back. 0-1, fouled out of play. Right over into the stands. And that looks like it may have caught a fan over here in the bleachers. Top row of the bleachers here on the first base line. A line drive in foul territory. And that one looks like it may have caught somebody on the top row. Well, we knew it was going to be that kind of day with the baseball game going on and the softball game going on. There were going to be foul balls flying all over the place. And that one, a line drive that just barely cleared the fence, and it hit a fan over here to our right. 0-2 count, swing and a miss. There's a strikeout. So Archibald will go down swinging, but the concern right now is over there in the crowd. That ball hit somebody right and looked like in their head, and like it bounced off a brick wall. And now there's a lot of folks over there as we continue to play on. First pitch here to Hodges, swung on and missed. It's nothing and one. Taylor Hodges playing second base, batting ninth in the lineup, top of the second inning, runners at second and third with two outs. Here's the 0-1, a swing and a miss, and it's nothing and two. The movement on that one from Mooney. 0-2 count to Taylor Hodges. Mooney trying to limit the damage. Here comes the pitch. Grounded foul and hard down the first base line. And Hodges fights it off to see another pitch. Top of the second. Error and left has led to a run for Aback, their first run of the day. Mooney's ready, 0-2, comes inside and there's strike three. She locks up Taylor Hodges and that will retire the side. But the error in left allows the Phillies to get their first run of the day. We'll go to the bottom of the second. First time today, Aback leads. It's a one nothing Phillies lead. Hey fans, how would you like to save at your next stop at the pump? Well, thanks to the May and Carter Oil Company, you can. All you have to do is download the new BP Me app today. It's free and it's available for Apple and Android devices. With the new BP Me app, you can save five cents per gallon at any BP location across the U.S. Download the new BP Me app today and let the May and Carter Oil Company show you how you can save five cents per gallon on your next fill up. Dedication, compassion, and integrity. We've got the experience and expertise. When you need some help and you feel like there's nowhere to go, you can count on us for everything you need to know. The Sellers Law Firm, where clients become family. Bottom of the second inning, it's a one nothing A-back lead. 
Skyler Evans going to lead it off for the Highlanders. J.C. Smiley pitching. First pitch on the way. Strike on the outside corner. J.C. Smiley retired the Highlanders in order. One, two, three in the bottom of the first. Skyler Evans, Allie McGee, Joni Littlejohn here in the second. 0-1 oh, to Skyler is in the dirt, and it's 1-1. One one. Skyler had a double in game number one. Came around to score in the fifth inning on that three-run homer by Ali McGee. 1-1 one, one count. This one hit out toward right center, and it's going to get down for a base hit. A leadoff single for Skyler Evans. That's the first hit of the ballgame for the Highlanders. Represents the tying run. And the hero from game one now coming to the plate. It's Allie McGee. First two at bat, she flew out to right field. And her third at bat, she sent it over the fence to right field. First pitch on the way. Popped up right here behind home plate and making the catch right up against the fence in foul territory is Ava Rowland. What a catch by Ava. One hand on the chain link fence. She's able to put her glove up and put Allie McGee away with one pitch. And now to bring up Joni Littlejohn, one out runner at first. Bottom of the second inning, one nothing Phillies. First pitch on the way here to Joni, here it comes. Just below the knees and there's ball one. Highlanders won the first one four to nothing. They extended their winning streak to seven games. They ended the 10 game winning streak that ABAC came in with today. Here comes the 1-0. This one smacked to short. Caught by Archibald, throw to first is on time, but it's in the dirt and gets away from Carter Gore. Just about doubled up Skyler Evans. Hard hit ball from Joni, but right at Ashley Archibald, and that's the second out. And now it's going to bring up Sydney Knight. One of the 11 sophomores on the team. First pitch on the way to Sid is... A little high and outside, and there's ball one. Sid didn't play in the first game, but here she is batting seventh in game number two. 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. Sid's got home run power herself. I believe she's hit four this season, if I heard her correctly in our interview between games. 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside, and it's two and one. That's about the best job a catcher can do to frame one and pull it back in. Ava Rowland just about pull that back in. Two one count. Smiley's ready, and here it comes. That's just below the knees, and it's three and one. Reagan Waller in the on deck circle. Two outs, runner on first. We're in the bottom of inning number two, game number two. 3-1 count. Here it comes. It's outside, and there's ball four. So Sydney Knight is able to draw a two-out walk. Puts runners on first and second. Two outs, and it's going to bring up the left fielder, Reagan Waller. Reagan had a single in the first game. Chance to tie it here in the second. Tying run is out there at second base. That's Skyler Evans. First pitch is slap foul out of play off to the right, and it's nothing and one. If Reagan can find a way to reach, Kendall Rollins is in the on deck circle. They're on first and second with two outs, bottom of the second. Here comes the 0 1 to Reagan. High and tight, it's one and one. Again, Reagan had the error in left field in the top of the inning and let a run come in and score. Good chance to. Get it back right here. 1-1 one, one count. Here it comes. Right down the middle, and that's strike two. Brings the count to a ball and two strikes. Highlanders with a chance to tie it here in the bottom of the second. Skyler Evans at second base, Sydney Knight at first. 1-2 count to Reagan Waller. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. 
And that is the second strikeout of the ball game for J.C. Smiley. Down goes Waller, and down go the Highlanders in the bottom of inning number two. A single by Skyler and a walk by Sydney. Gets a couple of runners on, but they are left stranded. We are through two innings. It remains a one-nothing lead for ABEC. When it comes to printing, there's only one name to remember. Georgia Signs and Print. From banners, yard signs, magnets, life-size cutouts, and vinyl, Georgia Signs and Print is the locally owned printer there for all your printing needs. Need graphics for your company vehicles and windows? How about commercial signs and screen print? Georgia Signs and Print can handle it all. Plus, they offer the fastest turnaround time and no minimum order requirement. No job too big, no job too small. If you're looking for a local printer who offers the best customer service, highest quality, and quickest turnaround time, Georgia Signs and Print is your local printer. For more details, visit Georgia Signs and Print on Facebook. At Georgia Signs and Print, we make it our business to showcase your business. Georgia Signs and Print, proud sponsors of the K-13 Media Player of the Game Award. Heading to the top of the third inning, it's a 1-0 A-back lead. Caitlin Munoz back out to pitch, and we're back to the top of the order for the Phillies. It's going to be Lexi Metz, Laney McGee, Carter Gore, 1-2-3 coming to the plate. Lexi Metz struck out in the top of the first. Chases one here high and outside, and it's nothing in one. Munoz was able to set him down in order in the top of the first. Trying to do it again here in the top of the third. Here's the 0-1. Popped up in the infield over toward first. Skyler Evans makes the catch in foul territory. And that's going to be the first out of the inning. That is the third pop fly Skyler has caught here in the ballgame. One out, and here comes Lady McGee. She also popped out to Skyler. And the top of the first. We're in the top of the third right now. Nobody on one out. This one popped up again right side. Skyler Evans tries to jump the fence, and it's just out of play. Well, she made a great effort right over here against the chain link fence. Had the glove on the top of the yellow tubing, and the ball was about six inches off the glove out of play in the front row of the bleachers. 0-1 oh, count. Here's the pitch upstairs. It's one and one. One nothing A back. They got a run last inning. Line drive to left. Popped out of the glove of Reagan Waller. Run came in to score. Here's the one one. This one hit out toward left field again. Over the head, and this one's out of here. A home run off the bat of Laney McGee. A line drive to left. And it's a 2-0 ball game as Laney McGee has a solo homer here at the top of the third inning. Makes it a 2-0 game. Not a real surprise. Abak came into the ball game, hit. That's their 41st home run they've hit this year. And now it's going to bring Carter Gore to the plate with one out. She'll tip one over towards second, an easy pop fly from Maddie Neal. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. And we've had a defensive change here at the top of the third. Emma Smith has gone to left. Reagan Waller has gone to right. So they have flip-flopped the outfield. First pitch on the way is a strike here to Allie Edson. Two outs, nobody on. Top of the third inning. Here comes the 0 1 pitch. Here's a strike to make it nothing and two. Allie Edson had a single in the top of the second inning. She got that rally started behind nothing and two here. She'll chase this one upstairs and foul it out of play, and it remains no balls and two strikes. Allie Edson had a single to right. Ava Rowland had a bunt single in between the pitcher and third baseman. And that got the damage started in the top of the second. One, two, ripped out to left, and 
A two hopper out there in front of Emma Smith. It's going to be a two out single. Second single of the ball game for Allie Itson. So to put a runner on first with two outs. And it's going to bring up the catcher, Ava Rowland. Made a great catch, last inning right up against the fence behind home plate. Off the bat of Allie McGee. First pitch here, swing and a miss on uh, some high heat. And it's nothing in one. Trinity Odom in the on-deck circle. It's in the base runner at first here in the top of inning number three. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Foul tipped into the mitt, and it's nothing in two. Again, Roland had the bunt single last inning. 0-2 count. Mooney's ready. Here's the pitch. Popped up foul territory. First base. Skyler gives it chase, and it's out of play. Skyler has already caught three pop flies in foul territory at first. Almost had number four earlier in the inning. Count remains nothing and two to Ava Rowland. Here's the wine and the pitch. Slapped right back up the middle. Mooney's got it. Throw to first is in time, but popped out of the glove of Skyler Evans. She's able to pick it up barehanded and retire the out. But Abac adds another run. A solo homer off the bat of Laney McGee extends the Phillies' lead. It's 2-0 as we head to the bottom of inning number three. Today's coverage of Highlander softball being presented in part by our friends at Collier's Greenhouse Garden Center and Nursery. They're located in Jackson right off of Highway 16, just a mile past the Sheriff's Department. Collier's is there for all of your garden needs this spring. They've got everything you can think of to plant. They've got your flowers. They've got your landscape supplies. Fourth generation, family-owned and operated business. Again, check them out on Facebook today. Every single day they're posting new arrivals at Collier's. You want to add some color to your spring? Collier's Greenhouse and Garden Center, a place to visit. Again, one mile past the Sheriff's Department on Highway 16 in Jackson. Glad to have you back here with us. We're going to the bottom of the third inning. Highlanders having a play from behind for the first time today. After winning the first game today, 4-0. They are behind 2-0 right now. But we didn't score anything in game one to the bottom of the fourth. Got a run in the fourth and three in the fifth. We'll go to the bottom of the third in game number two, and it's the bottom of the order going to lead it off. It'll be Kendall Rollins, and then it's back to the top with Emma Smith and Maddie Neal. Highlanders facing J.C. Smiley, lefty out of Long County High School in Ludowisi, Georgia, pitching here for the Phillies. Rollins will dig in. First pitch out of the way. Low and outside. It's ball one. Kendall playing center field today in both games for Gordon State on sophomore day. Boy, what a crowd we've got here today. 1-0, smash down the right field line, and it's going to get down for a foul ball on the warning track. Again, our baseball team's in action just to our right today. Last check, they were 9-9 in the seventh inning of game one. So they're playing to the right. We got softball right here in a packed, packed house today. 1-1 one, one count to Rollins. Here comes the pitch to her. Catches the outside corner. There's strike two. That one just kind of wrapped around. From the lefty, J.C. Smiley came back in and caught the corner. A ball and two strikes to Rollins. Former Locust Grove Wildcat. Here's the one, two, swing and a miss. Chased one upstairs. And that is strikeout number three for J.C. Smiley. Oh, yeah. So first trip through the order, Smiley strikes out three. Gives up just one hit. That was the single to Skyler Evans. And now we're back to the top of the order with Emma Smith. First pitch on the way to Emma. She shows butt, can't get it down. There's strike one. Come on, Emma. Oh, one count to Emma Smith. Here's the pitch. Came inside and jammed Emma. I see it, I see it. And it's nothing in two. You can do it. You can do it, Emma. 
Lefty on lefty matchup here in the bottom of inning number three in a two nothing ball game. Smiley's ready, the 0-2 pitch. Right down the middle, there's strike three. Second time today, Emma Smith has struck out. Hey, let's go, 10. And quickly, J.C. Smiley is starting to rack up her Ks. That's number four in the ball game. And Maddie Neal will step into the box. Line drive to shortstop her first time up, but hit it right to Ashley Archibald. We'll send this one out to shallow left, and it's going to fall down for a base hit. Two out single off the bat of Maddie Neal. Second hit of the ball game for the Highlanders, and it'll bring the tying run to the plate in Emma Gable. Oh, Emma. Emma grounded out over to second base her first time up. Two outs runner at first, bottom of the third in game two. First pitch to Emma outside. And it's 1-0. One, oh. one of 11 of the Highlander sophomores here today. We'll celebrate and honor all of them after the ball game. Not their final home game, though. They got one more doubleheader. Whoa, this one hits Emma high and tight. That one got away from Smiley. And it looked like that may have got Emma up around her left shoulder. She tosses the batting gloves to the on-deck circle. And you don't see a player get hit there too often. That one like it got her up around that left shoulder. But it'll put runners on first and second with two outs. And here's Skyler Evans, singled her last time up. Went to right center field for the first hit of the game for the Highlanders. She'll take a first pitch strike, change up on the outside corner. Runners on first and second in the bottom of the third. Two down. Here comes the 0-1 to Skyler. Another change up, same spot, outside corner, and it's nothing in two. J.C. Smiley looking like Bob Ross out there here in the third, just painting the corners perfectly. She's ahead, nothing in two. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. Skyler chased one up around her eyes. And that is strikeout number five for J.C. Smiley. So Gordon State able to get two runners on, but can't cash them in. Quickly, we are through three innings. It remains a two to nothing A-back lead here at Gordon State College. Spring is here, and Countryside Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Jackson and Madison are ready to help you hit the road. Ram Truck Month is back, and this month you can save big on our remaining 2023 Ram trucks, up to $15,000 on select 2023 models. Looking for a new Jeep? We've got them! And during the Jeep Celebration event, we're offering savings up to $16,000 on our 2023 Jeep Gladiators, and savings up to $15,000 on our 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees. We've also got the area's best supply of new 2023 Dodge Chargers and Dodge Challengers, Hellcats, Scat Packs, RTs, and Last Call Editions, all available today. Shop our huge online inventory at CountrysideAutomotive.com. While you're there, apply for easy financing. And this month, let's find your new ride at Countryside. I-75 exit 205 in Jackson and I-20 exit 114 in beautiful Madison. Madison, Georgia. We're moving along, heading to the top of inning number four here at Gordon State College. It's a 2-0 A-back lead here in game two of our doubleheader. Again, the Highlanders won the first one today by a 4-0 final. That got them back to 500 on the season. 16 wins, 16 losses, and also improved Gordon State of the conference to 11-4. Gordon State has won seven straight games, but they trail 2-0 as we go to the top of the fourth in game two. Trinity Odom will lead it off for a bag. Taylor Beagle now in the pitch, and the first one is lined right back to Taylor as she makes the catch. Past couple of games here at home, Taylor's taking some comebackers off her leg, off her shin, and I think that one may have surprised her at how slowly it came back to her. First out, and it'll bring up the DP, Anna Hutchison. Change up on the outside corner there, strike one. So Mooney goes three. 
here in game two. 0-1, swing and a miss. Another good changeup from Beagle. We were talking pregame about giving that pitch a name. So we're trying to get a, uh, a vote on what to call that changeup from Beagle. 0-2, swing and a miss. And there's strike three. Quick work from Beagle. Two up, two down. And it's going to bring up the shortstop, Ashley Archibald. She struck out in the top of the second inning. Nobody on, two outs here at the top of the fourth. Beagle trying to retire, eight back, one, two, three. First pitch a little outside, and there's ball one. Again, Taylor Beagle, former East Coweta Indian, playing for the legendary Franklin DeLoach over in Sharpsburg. One of the greatest, greatest people you'll ever meet. 1 0, uh, chopped, I should say, down the third foul. Coach DeLoach has been coaching baseball and softball at East County to High School for a long, long time. And well, he has certainly treated me very well over the years in broadcasting, being able to come over and all the times he's come and helped us out with lineups and rosters. 1 1 count at the belt outside, and it's taken for a ball, 2 and 1. Nobody on two outs in the top of the fourth. Here comes the 2-1 from Taylor. It's in the dirt and it's 3-1. Bottom of the order on deck, the second baseman, Taylor Hodges. But hopefully we won't have to see her till next inning. 3-1 count here to Archibald. Gable guarding the line at third. Here's the 3-1. Right back to Taylor and not one but two comebackers. And Taylor smothers both of them. That would look like it may have hurt a little bit. A line drive back to the pitcher. Taylor makes it look easy. And Beagle retires the Phillies 1-2-3 here at the top of the fourth. 2-0 ball game. Phillies on top of Gordon State as we move to the bottom of inning number four. Discover the power of precision with Countryside Mower and Gravely in downtown Jackson. During our open house event, enjoy exclusive deals like 0% financing with approved credit on new commercial and residential zero turn mowers and rebates up to $1,500. We've got the area's largest selection of new Gravely and Aaron's zero-turn mowers. Over 200 in stock and ready for delivery. Need service on your current mower? Now's the perfect time to come see us. We have a huge parts department and we service all brands, not just the brands we sell. Get ready for spring during the open house event at Countryside Mower in downtown Jackson. For more information, and to see our full inventory, visit us online at CountrysideMower.com. Bottom of the fourth inning. Highlanders will come to the plate trailing 2-0. Allie McGee leading it off here for Gordon State. Here comes the 1-0. This one grounded down to third to a knee. Lady McGee has it, and throw to first is in time. Good play over at third. Lady McGee throws out Allie McGee. And that's the first out here in the fourth. Good play by Laney. Able to drop down and get up in time and make the throw. For the first down here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And now comes Joni Littlejohn. First pitch swing and a miss, like a changeup upstairs. And it's nothing and one to the Highlander shortstop. Joni lined out the shortstop her first time up. That was in the bottom of the second inning. Nobody on here in the bottom of the fourth, one out. Another swing and a miss. Yeah, it looked like another off-speed pitch there from J.C. Smiley, the pitcher, for Abak. She's ahead, nothing and two. Here it comes. 
upstairs, and there's ball one. Smiley's got five strikeouts so far in the ballgame. She struck out the side in the third. One two count. Make it six K's. Got Joni with another changeup. Six strikeouts for JC Smiley. Two down in the inning. And it'll bring up Sydney Knight. Sydney's batting seventh in the lineup. Walked in the bottom of the second inning. First pitch on the way to her, swinging a miss on a good fastball, and it's nothing in one. Sid was trying to send that one to the batting cages out in left field. Reagan Waller in the on-deck circle. Two outs, nobody on in the fourth. 0-1 taken for a strike at the belt, and it's nothing in two. J.C. Smiley trying to retire the side in order for the second time today. She also did it in the bottom of the first. 0-2, here it comes, way high, and it's 1-2. A ball and two strikes to Sydney Knight. Nobody on, two outs. Here comes the pitch. Pop foul out of play behind home plate. We'll do it again. One two count to Sydney Knight. Smiley's ready, here it comes. Slapped over towards second. Hodges has it, third of first is in time. And it's another one, two, three inning for J.C. Smiley as she retires the Highlanders in order. We are through four in game number two. Abeck continues to lead it by a two nothing score as we move to the top of inning number five. When it comes to printing, there's only one name to remember, Georgia Signs and Print. From banners, yard signs, magnets, life-size cutouts, and vinyl, Georgia Signs and Print is the locally owned printer there for all your printing needs. Need graphics for your company vehicles and windows? How about commercial signs and screen print? Georgia Signs and Print can handle it all. Plus, they offer the fastest turnaround time and no minimum order requirement. No job too big, no job too small. If you're looking for a local printer who offers the best customer service, highest quality and quickest turnaround time, Georgia Signs and Print is your local printer. For more details, visit Georgia Signs and Print on Facebook. At Georgia Signs and Print, we make it our business to showcase your business. Georgia Signs and Print, proud sponsors of the K-13 Media Player of the Game Award. Heading to the top of inning number five in game number two. It's a 2 nothing A-back lead. Just heard the commercial for Georgia Signs and Print, player of the game. Well, that award went to Allie McGee in our first game today. Allie had a three-run homer in the bottom of the fifth inning. Helped Gordon State win the first one today 4 nothing. but the Highlanders trailing here in the second game. Taylor Beagle back out to pitch, bottom of the order to lead it off. Here's Taylor Hodges, first pitch swinging. She'll pop it out of play. And there's strike one. Taylor Hodges then back to the top of the order with Lexi Metz and Lady McGee. Lady McGee, a solo homer off of Caitlin Munoz in the top of the third. A one count. Here comes the pitch from Beagle. This one chopped out to Joni. Two hopper to shortstop. Joni's throw to first is just in time. Good stretch by Skyler at first to help out her shortstop. And that's going to be the first out here in the fifth. 6-3 on the put out. Good work by Joni to wait on that second hop and a great stretch at first by Skyler. And now we're back to the top of the order for Lexi Metz, center fielder for A-back, 0 for 2, a strikeout. And then she popped out in foul territory down the first baseline. First pitch just off the plate outside, and it's 1-0. Run in the second, run in the third for A-back. They score the run in the second on an error in left field. Here's the 1-0, and the dirt, and it's 2-0. Had a line drive to the left, and it just popped out of the glove of Reagan Waller. She just kind of took her eyes off of it, and a run came in to score, then a home run in the third inning. 2-0 count. Swing and a miss is 2-1. Get 
Highlanders riding a seven-game winning streak after winning the first one today, four to nothing. They are within a game of first place in the conference. Chopper to third, and foul ball right off the wrist of Emma Gable. She's going to make the count two and two. After today, ABAC will be on the road. They're heading up to Cartersville Wednesday for a doubleheader against Georgia Highlands. They'll take on the Chargers at 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock on Wednesday. Gordon State will also be in action Wednesday. First, the 2-2 pitch to third. Gable's got it. Throw to first, plenty of time. And there's the second out. Good play by Emma. And there's two outs here in the fifth. Highlanders will also be in action on Wednesday. We are heading to Milledgeville to take on Georgia Military. We did request permission to come and broadcast, but it was denied. So we tried, but could not get the green light. Two down, top of the fifth. First pitch upstairs, there's ball one to Laney McGee, the third baseman for ABAC. One for two on the day, a solo homer in the top of the third inning. Here comes the 1-0. There's a strike at the belt. It's 1-1. One and one. So the Highlanders head to Milledgeville to take on Georgia Military on Wednesday. And, man, those were two great games here earlier in the year, both one-run games. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Beagle. Chopped foul at the plate. And it's 1-2. and two. That was earlier in conference play. Georgia Military won 4-3 and 7-6 here in Barnesville. So we'll take it to them again on Wednesday. 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock. 1-2, here it comes. Line to short just over the head of Joni Littlejohn and it's out into center field for a two-out single. The schedule on the website still says Tuesday in Milledgeville, but it has been confirmed we'll play Wednesday simply because we don't have any bus drivers available on Tuesday. If you know of some bus drivers, Gordon State College would love to talk to them and offer them a job. $25 an hour starting pay. As Carter Gore steps in, grounded to third. Gable's got it on top of the bag, third to first in time. Emma Gable makes it look so easy over at third. And that will retire the Phillies in the top of the fifth inning. They get a single off the bat of Laney McGee, but she is left stranded. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Highlanders need some runs. It's 2-0 ABAC on top of Gordon State. Hey, fans, how would you like to save at your next stop at the pump? Well, thanks to the May and Carter Oil Company, you can. All you have to do is download the new BP Me app today. It's free and it's available for Apple and Android devices. With the new BP Me app, you can save five cents per gallon at any BP location across the U.S. Download the new BP Me app today and let the May and Carter Oil Company show you how you can save five cents per gallon on your next fill up. Dedication, compassion, and integrity. We've got the experience and expertise. When you need some help and you feel like there's nowhere to go, you can count on us for everything you need to know. The Sellers Law Firm, where clients become family. Bottom of the fifth inning. Welcome back to Barnesville inside the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth. I'm Chad Feltman with K13 Media. Happy to have you here with us. Game two of our afternoon doubleheader between Gordon State and ABAC. We're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. ABAC on top, 2-0. They got a run in the second and a run in the third. Highlanders yet to get on the scoreboard, but hopefully they can change that here. At the bottom of the fifth inning, going to have a pitch hitter coming to the ballgame. Leading it off and batting in the number eight spot, it is going to be Abby Arnold. Abby will come in and pitch it for Reagan Waller. So Abby will lead it off. Kendall Rollins will bat second. Then we're back to the top of the order. Eight, nine, and one here for the Highlanders in the bottom of the fifth inning. Abby Arnold, a freshman out of Piedmont Academy over in Monticello, Georgia. 
wearing number six, and she is going to bat here to lead it off in the bottom of the fifth inning, and she is going to face J.C. Smiley. Smiley's had quite the game in the circle today. Let's count them up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six strikeouts for Smiley. And so far, she's only given up two singles, one to Maddie Neal and one to Skylar Evans. Just one walk in the ball game. So Smiley has been very sharp through four. Highlander scored three in the bottom of the fifth in game one. That'll work again here in game two. And here we go. Again, Abby Arnold. Pinch inning for Reagan Waller to lead it off. First pitch from Smiley. Abby shows bunt, pulls it back, and there's ball one. Nobody on, nobody out. Getting late in game number two. Here comes the 1-0 to Abby. She'll bunt it over to first. It's a good one. Going to be a tough play. Throw to first just in time. Good play by the first baseman, Carter Gore, to get it to the second baseman, Taylor Hodges, who was covering the bag. 3-4 on the put out. It was a perfect bunt by Abby, but just a great defensive play by Carter Gore, the first baseman. So now there's one out, and here comes Kendall Rollins, 0 for 1 in the ball game. Kendall skies this one out toward deep right field, but Allie Itson had it played perfectly shaded toward the line. And there's the second out of the inning. Quickly two up, two down, and just three pitches. And we're back to the top of the order. It's Emma Smith. Emma's 0 for 2 in the ballgame. Couple of strikeouts, one in the first, one in the third. Lefty on lefty matchup here in the fifth. Smiley's first pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. Nobody on, two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the 0-1, slap to first. It's going to get in for a base hit. Diving attempt by Carter Gore, but just out of her reach. And Emma Smith has a two-out single. Third hit of the ball game for the Highlanders. The only problem is they've all three been singles with two outs. Here comes Maddie Neal. She had one of those singles back in the third inning. She'll go up the middle. She's got her second single of the ball game. First pitch swinging, Maddie Neal has another single. And that will bring the tying run to the plate. Emma Gable, who was hit by a pitch last time, would like to get some revenge here. Actually, that's the go-ahead run to the plate, beg your pardon. The tying run is on base. First pitch on the way, upstairs for ball one. Emma Smith, the base runner at second. Maddie Neal, the base runner at first. Third baseman, Emma Gable at the plate. Here comes the 1-0. Slaps it to deep right field, but right to Allie Edson. Again, Edson had it played perfectly. Barely had a move out there in right. And that'll do it for the Highlanders. In the fifth, a couple of two-out singles by Emma Smith and Maddie Neal. Nothing to show for it. We'll move to the top of the sixth inning. It remains a 2-0 A-back lead. Hello, friends. This is Pastor Benny Tate of Rock Springs Church. I have one question for you. Are there any dog fans here today? If you love the University of Georgia football, you are in for a special treat. I'd like to personally invite you to Rock Springs Church on Sunday, May the 5th, as I interview Georgia's quarterback, Carson Beck, at all of our services. You can find more information about our campus location and service times online at rockspringsonline.com. I hope to see you Sunday, May the 5th at Rock Springs Church as I interview quarterback Carson Beck of the Georgia Bulldogs. I'll see you then. Heading to the top of the sixth inning in a 2-0 ball game. Maybach still on top. Allie Itson 
will lead it off the right fielder. She's been busy out there in the outfield today. And now she gets a chance to lead it off. She's two for two in the ball game. Two singles for the A-back right fielder. She'll face Taylor Beagle for the first time. First pitch on the way. Strike at the knees, and it's nothing in one. Itson did something that not too many other players have done this year, and that's have two base hits against Caitlin Munoz. Mooney went three in this one. The Eagles here in her third inning of relief. 0-1, just a little outside, and it's one and one. One ball, one strike. Nobody out, nobody on. Top of the sixth inning and a 2-0 ball game. A back on top. Here's the pitch. Change up just above the knees, and it's called a ball right down the middle. Oh, man, I'd like to know where that one missed. 2-1 count. Here's the pitch from Beagle. There's a makeup call. Fastball below the knees inside, and the count's even 2-2. Two and two. two balls, two strikes. Allie Itson at the plate, the cleanup batter, trying to stay perfect on the day. She's two for two. 2-2 two -two pitch, chopper out to Beagle. She's got it. Taylor, throw to first in time, and there's the first out of the inning. So that really is the perfect day for Allie Itson. 1-3 on the putout, and it's the first out in the top of the sixth. And now it's going to bring up the A-back catcher, Ava Rowland. She's one for two on the day, had a single in the second. And she also tapped out to the pitcher. That was in the third when Mooney was out there. First one from Beagle is line foul down the third base line. A-back now sitting at 12 and five in the conference. Gordon, 11 and four. A-back has taken three out of four from Georgia military. Man, the Highlanders really, really need this one. If they could find a way to come back, they will take three out of four from ABAC and make it all kind of crazy at the top of the leaderboard. Here's the 0-1. Grounded out to short. Joni Littlejohn with it. Throw to first is low, but Skyler Evans is there to pick it up for out number two. 6-3 on the put out, second out of the inning. And now it's going to bring up the left fielder, Trinity Odom. Didn't get a chance earlier to give Trinity a shout-out on her hometown, so I want to make sure I do that. Trinity is out of Hawkinsville High School. Freshman, former Red Devil. Batting with two outs in the top of the six. Nobody on. Takes the first pitch ball, low and inside. It's 1-0. and oh. Sack bunt in the second. And a line drive back to Beagle in the fourth. Taylor had two comebackers in the fourth inning. She squeezed both of them. Here's the 1-0. It's going to get in for a two-out single. Line drive into left field. Single off the bat of Trinity Odom. And that is the second single that Beagle has given up. Puts the runner on first with two down. And it's going to bring up Anna Hutchinson. Or it was going to bring up Anna Hutchinson. It looks like Coach Reed is going to his lineup card, and we might have a pitch hitter coming in. Anna Hutchinson reached on that error in left. That line drive out to left that popped out of the glove of Reagan Waller, that allowed a run to come in and score. And then she struck out in the fourth. But we're going to have a pitch hitter coming to the ball game. And coming to the plate is going to be number 13. This is Lindsey Orton. Out of Gainesville, Florida. There's a pretty good place to do some gator hunting down in Florida. First pitch on the way. There's a strike outside, and it's nothing in one. Lindsey Orton, a freshman out of Buckles High School. Again, hometown of Gainesville, Florida. She is batting here for Anna Hutchinson. Seventh in the lineup. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Goodness gracious at the movement on that one from Beagle. 0-2 count. Runner at first, two outs, top of the sixth. Here comes the pitch from Taylor. Swing and a miss. And three straight pitches. Three straight swings and a miss. 
by Lindsey Orton. And that'll do it for the Phillies in the top of the sixth inning. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Highlanders needing a couple of runs to get back in it. Gordon State trailing right now by a 2-0 score. Roofing, gutters, siding, painting, concrete, fencing, and more. The list goes on and on. No matter what you need done around the home or office, Advanced Roofing and Interiors can handle it all, even major storm damage. No job too big or too small. When was the last time you checked the condition of your roof? Advanced Roofing and Interiors offers free roof inspections. Don't wait for issues to arise. Contact us today for a free roof inspection. Our expert team will provide an assessment, answer all of your questions, and ensure your peace of mind. Be sure to visit our Facebook page to see recently completed projects and read real customer reviews from real customers. Advanced Roofing and Interiors is locally owned and operated, licensed and insured, and works with all insurance companies. Visit us online at advancedroofingandinteriors.com to learn more and to see all services we offer. Bottom of the sixth inning, two nothing ball game. Heart of the order for the Highlanders. Skyler Evans, Ali McGee leading it off. First pitch to Skyler is in there for a strike. It is nothing and one. JC Smiley pitching here for the Phillies. Two nothing ball game, bottom of the sixth. Here's the 0-1. Skyler crushes this one. Heads up, batting cages. This one is way out of here. Skyler Evans crushes one to left field. It's a leadoff homer, and it's a two-to-one ball game. Absolute no doubt about it. Leadoff homer makes it two-to-one, and coming to the plate, a young lady who had a three-run homer. In game number one, it's Allie McGee with a chance to tie the game. Boy, that ball was crushed. That's one of those home run derby kind of home runs. Two to one, nobody out. Allie McGee steps in, 0 for 2 in the ball game. First pitch, oh, she tried to tie it up. Foul tipped into the mitt. She was 0 for 2 in game one, and then her third at bat, she hit a home run. Well, she's 0 for 2 in this one. This is her third at bat. Here's the 0-1. High and outside, and it's 1-1. One one. Joni Littlejohn in the on-deck circle. Allie McGee at the plate. It's 2-1 a back. Here's the pitch. Hit out toward left, but this one not high enough or far enough. A line drive out there to Odom. And she'll put it away for the first out. So one down, and here comes Joni Littlejohn. And if Joni could find a way to get on, you've got home run power in the on-deck circle with Sydney Knight. One out, nobody on, bottom of the sixth, J.C. Smiley pitching. First pitch, fastball outside. And there's strike one. Two to one ball game in the bottom of inning number six. Here comes the 0-1 pitch to Joni. It's outside and it's one and one. Hey, Daniel Itson is tuned in over on our YouTube page and said great job pronouncing Allie Itson's last name. Said they never hear anybody say it right, but I've got it. Well, Daniel, I gotta be honest, I cheated. I used to work with a gentleman whose last name was spelled the same way and pronounced the same way. <laughs> one one is fouled out of play. And it's one and two. So I had a little uh a little practice for several years when I used to work with a guy who had the same exact last name and pronounced it the same way. So, Plus, when I was down in Tifton last month, Coach Reed helped me out pronounce it too. So, But happy to get it right. Trust me, I have messed up my fair share of names in the 20 years I've been broadcasting. One, two, fastball, call strike three on the outside corner. And J.C. Smiley strikes out Johnny Littlejohn for the second out of the inning. So two outs, nobody on, and here comes Sydney Knight. Again, Sid has home run power. She could tie it with one swing. Here comes the first pitch upstairs, and it's ball one. 
told us one of the nicknames she has in our one-on-one -on -one interview with Squidward. Here's the 1-0. It's outside and it's 2-0. and One of her superstitions always must have a ribbon in her hair in every game, and she's got one today. Hopefully it's a good luck charm. 2-0 count. Here comes the pitch. Rolled outside and it's 3-0. It has been so fun this season getting to know our Highlander softball team, their superstitions, favorite things to eat, favorite places to travel on vacation. It's just been a fun, fun season. And, man, I have sure certainly been a – certainly enjoyed being a part of it. 3-0 count to Sid upstairs, and there's ball four. Four straight pitches. Second time today Sid has walked. And Aback may have known she had the home run power because – J.C. Smiley has not missed with four straight pitches all game. But did not give Sid anything solid to square up on. And now she'll face Abby Arnold. Two down runner at first. That's the tying run. First pitch is downstairs to Abby. There's ball one. Abby came in last inning in the top or the bottom of the fifth and pitch hit for Reagan Waller. And she grounded out to first. Here's the 1-0. Upstairs, that's 2-0. Oh. That's six straight balls thrown by Smiley. Bottom of the six. It's a 2-1 ball game. Highlanders just got on the board. A solo homer by Skyler Evans. 2-0 oh count to Abby Arnold. High and tight. It's ball three. Seven straight balls now for Smiley. Faith Southern has grabbed a bat. If Arnold can reach, you got faith in the on-deck circle. 3-0 count. Here's the pitch. It's outside, and it's ball four. Eight straight balls thrown by J.C. Smiley. And it will bring Faith Southern to the plate with a chance to tie the game or give the Highlanders the lead. Faith is going to come in and bat in the number nine spot, and she will pitch it for Kendall Rollins. Big opportunity here. And the one thing you got to keep an eye on about Faith, she loves the first pitch. You got to wonder if the scouting report for ABAC reveals that. But Faith out of Union Grove High School, former Wolverine with a big at bat here in the bottom of the sixth. Tying run stands out there at second base. Two outs. Back to back walks by JC Smiley. She has thrown eight straight balls. And let's see how aggressive Faith is going to be here. Will she be patient and see a strike? Tough opportunity here. Man, you want to go up there and smack it, but at the same time, you want to show some discipline. Pitcher struggling, tying run at second. And Faith Southern with an opportunity here for the Highlanders. And the bottom of the six, tying run at second with two outs. Smiley again has walked the last two batters. First pitch on the way. Swing and a drive. Left field is going to get down for a hit. Sydney Knight around third. She'll come in and score the tying run. I told you she loves the first pitch. And she got her one. Ties the game with an RBI pitch hit single. And we are tied at two in the bottom of the sixth. The former Union Grove Wolverine knocks in the tying run. That scores Sydney Knight. It moves Abby Arnold to third. And now the go-ahead run is just 60 feet away. All of a sudden, J.C. Smiley has fallen apart. Back-to-back -back walks and a pitch hit single. And we are tied at two here in the sixth. A solo home run by Skyler Evans and a pitch hit RBI single by Faith Southern. And now Highlanders with a chance to take the lead as we're back to the top of the order. Emma Smith is going to come to the plate. Singled her last time up. Two to two ball game, just like we did it down in Tifton. In March, we were down two runs, late, came back and tied it. 
We've done it again here in Barnesville. They're on the corners with two outs for Emma Smith. First pitch strike outside at the knees. It's nothing and one. Emma is one for three on the day. A couple of strikeouts and a single in the fifth. Here's the 0-1. Runner goes from first. Throw to third is not in time. Kendall Rollins will steal second. Come on, Emma. See it, Emma. Let's go, Bart. Here, hold. Two. two to two ball game. 0-2 oh, count to Emma Smith. Smiley's ready. Here it comes. Slice down the left field line. And we'll see another 2-2. Two -two, or 0-2, oh, I should say. Sorry. Hey, come on, Emma, get the middle, bud. Bottom come on, of the Emma. sixth inning. It, two. two to two ball game. The go-ahead run is at third. 0-2 count to Emma Smith, leadoff batter for the Highlanders. Smiley's ready. The 0-2, here it comes, high and outside. And there's ball one. Couldn't get Emma to chase. Boy, if we could just get a little luck right here, find one to drop. The 1-2, here it comes. Slap, base hit, left field. One run is in. Here comes Rollins, she'll score. Emma Smith with a two-run base hit. It's four to two Highlanders. On a one-two count, the former Pike County Pirate hits it right over the top of the shortstop's head, and it's four to two Gordon State. Man, what a rally here in the sixth inning. Highlanders have a four spot on the board. And we're going to have a pitching change here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Highlanders have taken the lead, timeout, and we are back right after this from Barnesville. Hey fans, how would you like to save at your next stop at the pump? Well, thanks to the May and Carter Oil Company, you can. All you have to do is download the new BP Me app today. It's free and it's available for Apple and Android devices. With the new BP Me app, you can save five cents per gallon at any BP location across the U.S. Download the new BP Me app today and let the May and Carter Oil Company show you how you can save five cents per gallon on your next fill up. Four to two Highlanders, bottom of the sixth inning. Gordon State has scored four runs. A pitch hit RBI single by Faith Southern to tie the game and a two run base hit by Emma Smith to put the Highlanders on top four to two. That will chase J.C. Smiley out of the ball game and it'll bring on a new pitcher here for the Phillies. Coming into pitch now is going to be number 21. This is Emily Zettmeyer, freshman out of Charlton County High School in Folkston, Georgia. Maddie Neal will come to the plate. Emma Smith is the base runner at second. Not that you want to be greedy or anything, but why not bring her in too? Zettmeyer ready. Two down, bottom of the sixth. First pitch on the way to Maddie Neal. It's way upstairs, and there's ball one. Four spot for the Highlanders in the bottom of the sixth inning. Not over with yet by any means, but here's the 1-0. High and outside. Oh, it's a strike. One-one count. I was getting ready to call it ball two, but Woo. evens it up. One ball, one strike. Two down, runner at second. Here's the one-one from Zetmeyer. Popped up. Shallow left center. The shortstop Archibald on the edge of the grass will make the catch, but it's a four-run inning for the Highlanders. And now Gordon State just three outs away from sweeping A back here in Barnesville. We'll go to the top of the seventh. Highlanders lead it for the first time in game two. They're up by a score of four to two. 
Discover the power of precision with Countryside Mower and Gravely in downtown Jackson. During our open house event, enjoy exclusive deals like 0% financing with approved credit on new commercial and residential zero-turn mowers and rebates up to $1,500. We've got the area's largest selection of new Gravely and Aaron's zero-turn mowers. Over 200 in stock and ready for delivery. Need service on your current mower? Now's the perfect time to come see us. We have a huge parts department and we service all brands, not just the brands we sell. Get ready for spring during the open house event at Countryside Mower in downtown Jackson. For more information and to see our full inventory, visit us online at countrysidemower.com. After a four-run bottom of the sixth, the Highlanders now just three outs away from another win against ABAC. Taylor Beagle in the circle in the top of the seventh. First pitch strike on the outside corner to the shortstop, Ashley Archibald. It'll be the eight, nine, and one spot. First three due up. Archibald 0 for 2 on the day. A strikeout and then a line out on a comeback right to Beagle. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Goodness gracious at the movement on that one from Beagle. Sitting right here straight behind home plate. You can just see that ball tailing on the outside corner. 0-2 count. Here's the pitch. Strike three. She went right back with it. First out of the seventh, a strikeout. Second time today, Archibald will go down swinging. One out, and we're at the bottom of the order. Second baseman, Taylor Hodges. She's 0 for 2 on the day. A strikeout and a ground out to shortstop. Beagle's ready. First pitch. Soft little pop fly to short, and there's Joni Littlejohn to put it away for the second out. And now Gordon State, one out away from a comeback victory on sophomore day. And it looks like we're going to get a pitch hitter coming to the plate. Lexi Metz was due to come up. Lexi's 0 for 3 in the ballgame, so we'll have a pitch hitter come off the bench here for Coach Reed. And it looks like it's going to be number 14. This is Ellie Bryant. Ellie got the start in game number one, but here she is coming off the bench in game two with two outs at the top of the seventh. Nobody on base. Highlanders need one out. Beagle's ready. First pitch. Strike right down the middle. It's nothing in one. Four to two, Gordon State. Top of the seventh. Here comes the 0-1 from Beagle. Upstairs around the letters, and it's one and one. Again, Gordon State getting ready to go to Milledgeville Wednesday for a showdown with GMC. Boy, if they can get one more out here, talk about momentum. 1-1, fouled back to the fence, and it's one and two. GMC came here and beat us both games a couple of weeks ago. They won both of those games by one run, and we absolutely just killed ourselves in both of those games with errors, or it could have been a totally different outcome. One-two count. Beagle rocks the wind. This one grounded to third. Gable's got it. Throw to first, and that's your ball game. Gordon State on sophomore day comes back. Four runs in the bottom of the sixth inning. Taylor Beagle throws four scoreless innings in relief, and the Highlanders win game two, four to two. They extend their winning streak to eight games, and they will have a shot to take sole possession of first place in the conference on Wednesday with a doubleheader against GMC. Man, what a day of softball here at Gordon State College. We knew there were gonna be good ones, but Little extra excitement in game number two as we welcome you back inside the Advanced Roofing and Interiors broadcast booth for one final time. I'm Chad Feltman with K13 Media. Man, what a day. What a crowd out here today, too. 
This place has been packed. We knew we were going to see great softball with ABAC and Gordon State, two of the elite teams in the conference, and we saw exactly that today. It took almost to the very, very end for Gordon State, but they were able to get it done. And again, that sixth inning, it was all started with a solo home run by Skyler Evans, and then you had the pitch hit RBI single by Faith Southern that tied the game at two, and then Emma Smith with a two-run single from the leadoff spot with a one-two count. Took a line drive to left center field. Highlanders go up four to two. And what can you say about Taylor Beagle today? Four innings of shutout work. She comes in and nails down a back. Offense gets it done in the sixth, and the Highlanders win it again by a final of four to two. Won the first game four to nothing. So. Gordon State takes three out of four from ABAC in the regular season. And once again, it sets up a showdown on Wednesday in Milledgeville. Two games against GMC. Oh, what a Wednesday night that is going to be. Wish we could come broadcast the game. We requested, but our request was denied. But I got a feeling I'll probably still be there to update that one throughout the night. Too big of a ball game not to go see it. Congratulations, player of the game in game number one. We went with Allie McGee. She had the three-run homer. Game number two is going to be tough. I mean, we, we've got three different young ladies. Faith Southern with a game-tying base hit. Emma Smith with a go-ahead hit. Taylor Beagle, four scoreless innings. I don't know. i got to get with Coach Allie and Coach Nikki and see if we can uh, come up with a, a decision on game number two's Georgia signs a print player of the game, but either way, somebody's going to get a free meal to Mama's Kitchen. I know that's where I'm going to dinner tonight. Going to try out the Thai dog. Oh, those hot dogs are sounding good tonight. Can't wait to get over there. And again, happy birthday to Miss Angie at Mama's Kitchen. What a day of softball. Thank you all so much for joining us here on the broadcast. And hopefully we'll get to come back and do another one before the season is over. 4 nothing final in game one. 4-2 to two comeback win in game number two. Highlanders win them both. And now have extended their win streak to eight consecutive games. On behalf of Dr. Don Green, president of Gordon State College, Dr. Tanya Moore, our director of athletics, and Coach Allie Hatterman, the head coach of the Highlanders, I'm Chad Feltman with K13 Media. Thank you all for joining us. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll leave you tonight with a big old let's go Highlanders. We'll talk to you again soon, folks. Have a good one.